Have you realized that you were sent here for a purpose and that you are already physically hardwired to understand and develop that purpose? Did you know that your brain operates on a level that you do not consciously realize and that when you tap into this level, you can be given powerful insights and answers to what your life is truly supposed to be about? The program you are listening to right now has been developed with you in mind. In this program, Dennis Higgins and Dr. John La Tourette use their combined 47 years of experience to teach you what Jose Silva originally called a new way of thinking. Packed with cutting edge and recently developed conditioning cycles and exercises in the Silva tradition, this unique mind technology will help you and your family in every area of life, health, relationships, business, personal growth, and your ultimate purpose in life. Silva Ultramind takes the spiritual approach that we were all sent here for a purpose, and that purpose is to improve conditions on the planet. When you dedicate yourself to doing that, to improve conditions for humanity, an interesting thing happens. The conditions in your own life improve. Your health and happiness increases. You have better relationships, feel more confidence, satisfaction, and fulfillment in your life, and somehow you'll receive all of the things you need to keep going. When you lift up humanity, you are lifting up yourself as well. Silva Ultramind's remote viewing and remote influencing will take you to the next level of mind power for the betterment of your life and that of humanity. There are countless benefits from learning the skills taught in this program. By practicing remote viewing, you can detect health problems and threats to your health and then take action both physically and mentally to maintain optimum health for yourself and your loved ones. You'll be given the ability to troubleshoot relationship problems by remotely viewing them even before they develop. You'll be able to sense the other person's needs and wants so that you can respond appropriately. You can use remote influencing to establish rapport at deep inner levels and watch the changes that take place at the outer level. Do you want a better job? A new, more fulfilling career? Something more meaningful, interesting, and satisfying to do? Do you want to start your own business, more customers, bigger sales, better working conditions? You can use remote viewing to detect problem areas, then use remote influencing to convince others that you have a solution. You will now have the ability to turn every problem or challenge into an opportunity. And that's just the beginning. Study and learn the remarkable new technologies of remote viewing and remote influencing and get ready to take your life and the lives of those you love to the next level. Get ready to explore your inner space and unlock your minds and life's true potential. And now, the Nightingale Conan Corporation is very pleased to bring you Dennis Higgins and Dr. John La Tourette. First up, Dennis Higgins. Well, hello, my name is Dennis Higgins. Now, I always thought that to be psychic, you had to have a bump on the head or be born a certain way or wired up in a different way. And Jose Silva told me that everyone, everyone listening to this program right now, yes, you, you are hardwired. You already have the equipment that you need to be an outstanding, intuitive psychic. There's no wires that need to be crossed. There's nothing you need to change physically. You just need to learn to do some simple things. See, Jose refused to call his program extrasensory perception like everyone else because he said these senses aren't extra. They're our original senses. These are the senses you were born with. And then the physical senses get piled on top of those. And our original senses... Our psychic and intuitive senses just fade away from not being used. So let's look at these senses that are piled on top, these physical senses. The sense of touch, well, that reaches out about as far as you can reach. Your arm's length, that's the sense of touch. Then there's the sense of smell. Well, that's limited by distance. And then you can hear. Well, that's limited by a certain distance. And then you can see. 
that's limited by how far you can see. So let's look at these other senses, these original psychic senses that you were given, your intuitive senses, the original ones, the ones you were born with. They're not limited. They're not limited by how far someone can see or hear. And they're not limited by time and space. These are the senses that you were given to come to this planet and take your rightful place. So everything involved in this program is something that you can do. When Jose decided to teach this to the masses, he had to come up with such simple exercises that anyone can do this. It has always been a thrill to watch eight-year-old children go through this class and be able to do everything that Jose promised. And Jose has such faith in people. He has such faith in you that for 40 years, he taught this in 122 countries with 5 million graduates with a money-back guarantee. He said, if you can't do it, I'll give your money back. And only one-tenth of one percent ever asked for their money back. That's how much faith he has in the human race. That's how much faith he has in you. So use your curiosity here. Let yourself go beyond your normal boundaries that you develop. Be the person, be the psychic, the intuitive that you are wired up to be. You can claim your inheritance. This is your chance to do something extraordinary, out of the ordinary. Now, suppose you had a computer, and let's talk about you, your brain, and your mind. Suppose there was a computer sitting on a desk, and it's a standalone computer. It's not connected to the net. It's just right there all by itself. Now, you as the person are the same thing as the mind would be. You as a person are the mind, and you use the computer. Now, the computer is very logical. It's like our left hemisphere. It can only operate on information that's been put into the system through our own personal physical experience. Now, this is very limited so that when you're trying to think with this computer, it's a closed system. You can only use the abilities that you have acquired physically. So now let's talk about hooking this computer up to the net. Imagine if this computer was hooked to the Internet, how it opens up to all this information out there in the world. Now, how does a computer hook to the net? It has an object in there called a modem. And that's like our right hemisphere. Our right hemisphere can connect to all the other right hemispheres out there on the planet. It can connect to the central processing database that they have out there the huge supercomputers that talk to each other every night. So what did you learn today? What new information did you get? It can connect to those. Our right hemisphere goes beyond what a modem can do. Our right hemisphere is not limited by time. Our right hemisphere can go back to the beginning and get every piece of information, every bit of wisdom, every bit of knowledge, the wonderful ideas, the inventions, the points of view of the greatest thinkers that ever were on the planet, of geniuses. And it can move into the future. And it can hook up with, it can download information from every great thinker that ever will be. It's not limited by time and space. So imagine using this standalone computer and being limited to what you have just experienced physically with your senses, what you've heard, what you've been told, what you've read. That's how 90% of the people walk around on the planet today. This program will connect you to the Internet, to that vast intuitive Internet out there that's not limited by time and space. This will allow you to get information to send information, to influence things, influence people remotely. You can use this in your personal relationships. You can use this in your family. Someone's going to be out there talking to your children, trying to get them to use drugs or do something. And you had better get there first and be able to influence them on a deeper level than their friends, 
then commercials, then the society. You can use this in business. We'll have a special section on business. And it is so effective that I caution you and ask you to make sure when you're influencing someone remotely in business and in any other activity that you are careful to make sure that you're influencing them in a way that will help them, that's best for all concerned, and that will make this a better place. Now, in this program, when we talk about remote viewing, we're talking about using a different set of senses. Did you ever go to a place and you see, well, this looks so familiar. I feel like I've already been here. Well, yes, you were there last night when you were sleeping or two weeks ago or a month ago. Yes, you remote viewed it. And now you're remembering that familiarity comes from remembering that you remote viewed this place. All through your life, you've been doing Little bits of this. You've seen little hints of what you can do, of where your talent is. So remote viewing is something you've already done. We're not talking about you doing something that you don't know how to do. We're talking about doing something that you're going to learn how to do at will and on purpose and how to focus it. And then what is remote influencing? Well, it sounds like being able to influence people or objects from a distance. Well, we can already do a little bit of that. We do it mechanically every day. We send emails. We learn how to control another computer at our office from a laptop. You've already done this in your life. You've already had instances just sporadically where you said, well, I sure wish John would call me. And then an hour later or the next afternoon, John calls you. And you say, well, that must be a coincidence. Well, the definition of a coincidence is two things happening together. And that's you wishing John would call and John calling. So we learn to put those two things together. Coincidence doesn't mean it's an accident. Coincidence means that there were two incidences tied together that worked together. One is you picturing and putting out one of your mental emails. I sure wish John would call me. And then somehow John responds to that and calls you. So remote influencing is when you're coming home and you just stop at the store and you don't know what you want and you pick up a loaf of bread along with what you may have needed or something. And you walk in the door and you hear, honey, oh, I tried to get you on your cell I needed a loaf of bread. Well, you've already done this. These are things you've already done. This is not new for you. This program is showing you how to do it at will. Like someone who could accidentally get a bullseye when they're practicing archery. Well, every once in a while they'll get a bullseye and then an instructor will teach them how to do it more often, more accurately and at will. These are very powerful techniques. They are effective. You will marvel at how effective they are. You'll be amazed how simple this is. Just make sure that you use them ethically and with responsibility to your fellow humans. Now, once in Laredo, Texas, at one of the conventions, can you imagine that? A thousand psychics from all over the world gathering together at one of the Silva conventions? So I stepped away from the convention, and there in the restaurant was Jose Silva sitting alone by himself at a table. And I wasn't going to miss that opportunity. I asked to join him. He said, sure, sit down. And I said, Jose, can you just sum this up for me? I was a recent graduate, and I just needed somebody to frame this. Can you frame this for me and tell me how this works? He said, certainly. He took his finger and he dipped it into a glass of water and he drew a line across the table. And he said, on one side of the line is ordinary consciousness. That's the beta consciousness. That's how we were taught by our parents to walk around. It's limited. It's limited to the physical senses. Now, on the other side of the line, he said, that's where all the good stuff is. That's where you're not limited by time and space. 
That's where you can know what you need to know, know when you need to know it. And he said, we are stuck on the other side of the line. We're stuck there in the beta ordinary consciousness. So this program, he said, teaches people to have a foot on each side of the line, to center over the line. And he took his two fingers and he put one finger on either side of the line. And he said, we can stand with a foot in each realm. We have a foot firmly planted in the material. And then we have one foot in the spiritual, in the mental dimensions. And he said, then we can function the way human beings were meant to function. They can look into the material world. They can see what needs to happen, see what problems need to be solved, see what difficulties need to be changed. And they can report those back to the mental and spiritual world and bring that change through them and make this a better place to live. They can help their children. They can help their neighbors, their family, their boss. They can change what they do for a living. They can help themselves financially. They can heal people. They can change actual physical ailments. He said, this is the way we were meant to be. And I have confidence that everyone out there that uses this program will be able to do these wonderful things. Now, he said, some people call these things miracles. Well, if we went to Australia and found an indigenous tribe and went up and talked to the shaman and we asked him, which would be easier to communicate with the mental or spiritual world or for me to pull this little plastic thing out of my pocket and punch some numbers and talk to another little plastic thing in New York. Well, he would call that cell phone a miracle because he doesn't have that equipment. He hasn't learned how to use that equipment. Now, what he would call himself communicating with people at a distance and getting information from his ancestors or from the other side, you might say, that's what he would call ordinary. That's his cell phone. So what Jose said is, I teach people to use this equipment that they were born with. I teach them to be a better human being so that they can help this planet, so they can make this planet a better place in which to live. And so that when they leave this planet, there are so many people that are so much better off. They leave this planet a better place for those who follow. So let me use this as a perfect example. This program that you're listening to now was put together using every one of these techniques. We used the mental video. We said, here's the situation. We need material for this program that's going to help these people take their rightful place in the universe. And these exercises, the mental exercises that you do, the talks that you listen to to get ready to do the mental exercises, these all came through using these techniques. So this course that you hold in your hand, that you're listening to now, is actual proof that all of these techniques work. So often, we're asked to try something or do something, and we do it on an act of faith. You got the actual proof in your hands. We use the system to build this course. And who did we ask? We asked higher intelligence to tell us how to speak with people, and how to invoke from them their own natural abilities and talents, the ability to talk to higher intelligence, the ability to remote view. We were having a marketing meeting. Those are always fun. So I remote viewed the marketing meeting ahead of time and wrote down the answers to one of the questions that we were asked. I showed it to one of the producers as a witness and then when we went into the meeting, someone asked that question. I showed him the answer and said, look, we wrote this down ahead of time. Now, that doesn't mean I'm special. That means I'm a very ordinary person. 
that means I was wired up exactly the way you are, exactly the way pretty much everyone in the world is wired. That means that all I did was use what you hold in your hands now to make my life more valuable, more valuable to the planet. You see, if you want to become valuable, use this course to go out and help the planet. That's what will make you more valuable. It has always been my pleasure to watch people use this program, to begin to learn this program. They come in with curiosity, and they sit down and do these simple, simple techniques. You can see them begin to use more and more of themselves. You can see a balance taking place. You can see them move more towards the center of that line, to move from the off-center physical world to stand with a foot in each realm, just like Jose Silva said. And in this program, you'll notice with practice that you'll start using more and more of your talents and abilities, that you'll begin to be in the right place at the right time. You'll say the right thing to the right person, that when you think a thought and say, you know, I need to talk to a certain person the phone will ring within the next two days and it'll be that person. You'll start to see these things evolve and they'll become more and more a part of your life until finally you'll be able to take your intuition for granted that people will marvel at the things you do that have just become ordinary doings for you. So use this program, practice it, enjoy it, and take your rightful place with a foot in each realm. Take your rightful place in the center. Be the liaison for higher intelligence and the physical world. It's what you were meant to be. Now I'd like for you to meet a good friend, John LaTourette. John is a graduate. He's been a Silva instructor. He's taught thousands of people how to take their rightful place in life. He's taught people how to use more of their minds and use them in a special way. He teaches people to be miracle workers, people just like you. So here's John. My name is John LaTourette, and I am in Silva Mind Control. I've been in Silva Mind Control since about 1980. And I'm a different type of person than most of the people that seem to hit into the mind control area. I've been a martial artist since 1950, and in 1980, I'd been doing martial arts for about 30 years. And, you know, I didn't want to get spiritual. I didn't have any ideas about all that other stuff most people seem to be going towards the Silva Mind Control for. I wanted to get better. I wanted to get smarter. I wanted to get faster. I wanted to become wealthy. I wanted all those other things like that because that's where I was at the time. So I took the Silva Mind Control class, and I still remember the first time I did my remote viewing skills. And everybody else in class, they were sort of going, well, I don't want to get up in front of class and do the drill. And I go, well, here, let me go first. I'm used to it. So I went up there, and I got 100% accuracy on the hits. And I went, there's something here. This stuff actually works. So I had to figure out, how can I use this where I want to use it? So what I did is I used it for my business success in martial arts. I took a small martial arts school, and in six years I retired wealthy because I just took that school and I just built it up and built it up and built it up, and then I just retired. I wanted to get a Ph.D., so I used it that way. I used it for learning faster, for learning better, for choosing the school to go to, to choosing the professors I wanted to be with. I'm into marketing. I use the Alpha Brainwave on one marketing project, and the marketing project I'll talk about just in a second here, but by writing one ad, it pulled in $1.2 million in just a year by using one ad. Now, the advertisement was over an area that I had not even thought about before, but when I was thinking about what to write the ad on, I used the Alpha programming techniques to contact my higher self by just saying, well, if I had a project that I could use to make money and would help a lot of people in the martial arts, what would it be? And and so I sent that thought to my higher self. And about two days later, I'm talking with one of my black belts from Florida. And I had some videos out that time of martial arts techniques. So I said, hey, uh, Jim, I've got these videos here on martial arts techniques. I want to know if you want to buy them or not. And the guy goes, no. And I go, oh, cool. 
and this seemed like it just popped in the right side of my head. It goes, ask about speed. And I said, well, I'm thinking about doing something about speed. And the guy goes, speed? You've got something on speed? I want it. I want it. I go, yeah, I'll get back with you. And so I phoned up another one of my black belts in Denver, Colorado. And I go, hey, I got these martial arts videos here I'm trying to sell. You want it? And he goes, no. And I go, well, I've got this thing on speed. I was wondering if you might be interested in that. And he goes, speed? Speed? I want it. And I went, oh, that's cool. So then I put out a bunch of stuff on speed. Anyway, so I'm going for my doctorate training. I'm in Boulder, Colorado. They want to model this person on an athletical thing to see what he's doing that gives him the skill and that expertise in that field of expertise. So I said, well, I'll do it. I'll volunteer. So they started modeling me, and we found out some things I did gave me lots of speed, some things I did gave me no speed, and some things gave me speed and power. So what we did is we put together a bunch of speed techniques with a bunch of power techniques, combined them together so they all flowed together, and we found out that we could make a normal athlete that could usually do three to five hits in a second, we can get him up to 18 hits in a second. Now, when we were doing the advertising for this program about speed hitting, we found out if we told them about 18 hits in a second, it wouldn't work. They think we're lying. So what we did is we went to level and I go, okay, what's the speed they'll believe? And for some reason, the number 11 came up. So we started doing the thing about how to hit a man 11 times or more in one second or less and kick him in the head before he can see your foot move. And that's the product that went and sold $1.2 million worth in a year, which I thought was pretty good. So there's all sorts of ways that you can use this. And like I was talking with a dentist last night, and we were talking about spirituality and using this correctly, using this incorrectly. And the thing is, is we all use it where we're at. And if you're using it in a way that is not good for where you are going to go, then you'll find out soon enough because you're going to get feedback in life, and it'll give you the feedback whether it's going to work or not. What the Silva ESP Systems has done for me, it's done a lot for me in the healing area. I fell out of a tree on September 14th, five years ago, and I broke my back. They told me it'd be about a year to two years before I got out and started exercising again. And I was getting fat and sassy, and I was lazy at the time. And so I went to level, and I asked my higher self, I said, I don't fall out of trees. I don't break my back. I'm very, very coordinated. I'm very, very aware. And I said, it felt like someone pulled this ladder out from me, and then I hit on the log run underneath me. And I said, what's going on? It came back. It says, well, you're getting old. You're getting fat. You're getting lazy. You have too many skills to teach. And we're just trying to give you a wake-up call. And I said, that's cool. It hurts. So I did some visualization techniques on how to fix this. And it didn't work. The visualization techniques did not work. In other words, you go to level, you use the mental video technique, and you look for answers to come, and answers wouldn't come. And so I asked myself, well, if answers were to come, what would I have to do first to make them so they're workable? And it came back to me that basically get out, start teaching this stuff, start going out and doing the material you know how to do so well. And it gave me this outline of stuff to do. Do this with vitamins. Sleep this way. Have an inclined bed. Make sure you're propped up so your spine doesn't move. Do visualization drills in such and such and such a way. Gave me 17 things to do in an outline. I did them. And six days later, I was able to work out again. My back wasn't totally healed, but it was healed a lot better than it should have been in a year. And that's basically one of my other wake-up calls I had about getting the body in shape, learning how to do what you already know how to do, hooking up like Dan was talking earlier between the left hemisphere of the brain, the right hemisphere of the brain, so you can interrelate and communicate between the conscious mind, the logical, precise, the creative part of your mind, the part that hooks up to higher intelligence and exponentiate your potentials like we're meant to do down here on this planet. What happens when we're teaching the Silva ESP systems is we talk a lot about going to level and we talk a lot about doing mental exercises or drills. And we have sounds in there. We have certain conditioning cycles in there that have certain purposes. Now, just on the long centering drill that we're going to do in a few minutes, you'll notice that if you count them as a hypnotherapist would count them, you'd notice that just in the first half of the conditioning cycles, we have over 39 different procedures that Jose Silva came up with that most people don't even know about that help you get to the special spot. That's the reason it works so well. 
Now, going to level basically means learning how to take your brain waves from normal beta brain wave consciousness, which is what we call the logical precise consciousness, is what our education puts us in after about the age of 12. Most of our educational systems are for beta brain wave. We also have a creative consciousness, which is normally called alpha brain wave, and most people that have, say, the logical precise consciousness don't have the creative consciousness because everybody's seen the starving artist that can do a fantastic painting or is a very, very good singer, but he has no business sense. And then, of course, we see the guy that has all the business sense, but he doesn't have any creativity. Well, coming to level means that you balance the left logical brain hemisphere with the right creative brain hemisphere in such a way that they work together. So you're not sitting there trying to dance on one leg, your left leg or your right leg. You're dancing with both legs. so Everything's moving in unison together. Now, what Jose Silva found out based upon brainwave activity research is that when you hear with both ears an alpha brainwave sound, which is usually between 7 and about 14 cycles of brainwave activity, and you play it so it brings your mind down to about 10 cycles of brainwave activity, then both the left brain and the right brain hemisphere start working together so you can think a lot better if you can remain conscious. Now, unfortunately, most people, when they get to alpha brainwave, they're asleep, so What he did is he first initiated this four-day sequence of drills where you keep going to level, keep going to level, keep going to level. And then after about five hours of doing these drills, you find out that you do have your consciousness, your inductive thinking, your ability to chunk up with your thinking skills while at alpha brainwave. You have your visuals, you have your auditory, your gustatory, your senses. You have all of these kinesthetics working together as you can still think, but is now thinking with whole brain consciousness instead of single brain consciousness, either left brain or right brain. Now, there's something else that's called the Schumann resonance, and it's about 7.1 cycles per second and 7.3 cycles per second, and it's the Earth's magnetic field. And when they've done all their ESP testing for people that can do remote viewing and for people that can do instant healing, like with the Qi Kung trainers when they do the chakra healings from left hand to right hand and going through the target in the auric field, they found out that the brain waves are operating at 7.1 cycles of brainwave activity or at the Schumann resonance, the Schumann frequency. Now, what happens is that's called theta brainwave. Now, when people get into theta brainwave, they're totally asleep. So to get whole mind thinking, you want to be able to get your alpha brainwave so it's conscious. So you go beta brainwave, which is normal, logical, precise thinking. You want to have total access to your alpha. And by the way, the senses of visual, auditory, kinesthetic, gustatory, olfactory, they're not developed at alpha at all. So Jose, what he did is he'd take you to alpha, then have you do visualization techniques with full senses so you can develop those and then have an awareness in alpha brainwave. So when the information came through the right temple, temporal lobe, you can make consciousness out of it with both brain hemispheres so it made sense to you, so you get a better interpretation of what was being communicated to you by higher intelligence. But anyway, the visualization drills will teach you how to think in that new dimension called alpha, and then we take you all the way down to seven cycles of brainwave activity in the conditioning cycle, because seven is where all those things happen, the healing and the remote viewing. So we have all this information here about how it's done. But the thing is, is how does this tie in to remote viewing or into remote influencing? In my mind, it's sort of like learning how to drive a car. You have to know a minimum amount to learn how to drive a car. But if you want to repair cars, you have to know a lot more. So instructors know more about the workings than the other people. But to drive a car is pretty simple. All you have to do to drive a car is basically is to learn how to go forward, how to go back, how to take a left, how to take a right, and how to calibrate around you. The most important part of all that is how to calibrate around you. Now, with remote viewing, what you do is when you take a deep breath, close your eyes, and relax. At that time, you're relaxing your mind, and you're going into alpha brainwave, and then you ask yourself a question. That's called segment intending. So you have to know what you want, not what you don't want, but what you do want. I have a headache. I don't want to have a headache. I want to feel fine. I want to feel better than before. Okay, and so you always end up with what you do want. So if you know what you want in life, if you have a segment intending for any drill, like if I could make a million dollars with this advertising project X, how would I? 
at Alpha, when you're hooked up to what we call the spiritual dimension, which is actually called in quantum mechanics, it's called the non-local universe, then all the information will feed into your mind that pertains to the frequency that you've asked for information from. So you would sit there, you ask your questions, and this would be getting into the mental video, which we'll cover in much more detail later. You find out what you know right now, and you find out what you don't know, and you find out what you want to get. And the mental video will cover all three of these. And so what you'll do is you'll take a deep breath, relax. You'll go to the level of mind where you connect up to your right brain hemisphere so you're aware to get the information that comes in. And then you're going to ask yourself, if I could make a million dollars with Project X, how would I? And that will cause the transderivational search process of your mind to attract those attractor fields of that information. Then all of a sudden, either right then or in a dream that night or during the next day up to about 72 hours, you'll start getting information about how to do X, whatever you wanted to do in the same process. I had another marketing project that I was working on, and I'd been giving these seminars on Huna, which is the teachings of the shamans out of Hawaii, the Kahuna. And I had about four years worth of backlog videos that I'd collected from various seminars I gave. And I was down at a marketing seminar, and I was learning how to write copy, even better copy for advertisements. And I asked myself, at level on the plane back, I said, how could I use this new marketing stuff I've got to help people learn stuff that's going to help them? And so I went to level and I just sort of dozed on the airplane, you know, relaxed, eyes closed. And all of a sudden he says, well, write up a letter and call the letter the Kahuna Warrior Mind Suck Training Program. And I go, okay, sure. And I left out the Kahuna Warrior Mind Suck stuff. And I, I named it something esoteric. And so I wrote up some ad copy. And then I went to level the next night. And I go, I wrote the ad copy. Is there anything I need to change? And I woke up in the middle of the night and he says, yes changed the title back to Kahuna Warrior Mind Suck. And I said, sure, yeah, you betcha. And I went back to sleep, and I woke up about 10 minutes later and says, no, get out of bed, write it down, change the title to the Kahuna Warrior Mind Suck, do it now. And I go, yeah, uh-huh, you bet. So I went and turned over and went back to sleep, and I had about yelled in my ears the next time. So I got up, and I wrote down Kahuna Warrior Mind Suck training program. Next day, I put it out. I mailed out a test mailing. We made $108,000 in three weeks off that project. And it was the title that sold the package. And so how can you use it? Well, the way you use it is you pay attention to it. You ask the right questions, then you pay attention to it, then you take actions on the information that you've got, and then you basically calibrate and see if this is what you want or not. It's pretty simple. Remote influence is real easy to do. In fact, remote influence is so much easier to do than remote viewing. I mean, if you're in their body energy field, you can influence anybody up to 30 feet. I've demonstrated using the auric influence of unzipping somebody's energy field all the way across an auditorium, and they're at the front of the class, and we're at the back of the class, and we energy test them, and it works. But the reason it works is even though you're distanced by, say, 150 feet, All the other bodies are linking up their energy fields together, so when you work on them, they're close enough to be able to attach the energy field to the one closest to them by the stand. And if you go to level and communicate to them distant communication with their criteria, you can actually get some very, very positive communications. But if you're trying to make them do something that's totally against what they want to do and you don't use their criteria, it won't work, but they'll still be aware of the communication. And so remotely influencing will work as long as you keep everything in mind, dovetailing their outcomes with your outcomes for the best of all concerned, then it always seems to work. With this Silva Ultramind system, you're going to be given a bonus recording, and it's going to include an alpha sound and a theta sound. Now, the alpha sound is very, very important because that's the one that goes along with the centering drill. So when you are listening to the actual recording of the centering drill, they'll take you through the drill. But when you start working on your own projects using that deep level of relaxation, then at that time, it's good to just put on the alpha sound and then use your own conditioning cycles towards your own goals, your own wishes, your own desires, using the mental video however you want to use it. 
Now, on the theta sound, this is the sound that you use for ESP and for helium because most of the helium and ESP has been documented to occur at 7.1 to 7.3 cycles of brainwave activity. And so the alpha will get you down and have you centered at 10.5 cycles of brainwave activity so you can have a bridge between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. This theta sound will actually get you down so you're beyond that bridge a little bit with your intelligence so you can go into that realm of 7.1 cycles of brainwave activity and use it for the mental video. You can use it for the three scenes technique. You can use it for healing. You can use it for remote viewing the past, the present, and the future. And it gets you that point that you're hooked up to basically the other dimension. These are both very important recordings to listen to, especially when you start using your own materials in there and going with your own directions with the Silva Ultramine ESP Systems course. Now, make sure that you learn how to use the Alpha Tape, and we recommend for the first 30 days that you're using the Alpha Tape, you use it every day, once a day, and practice it so those brain frequencies are ingrained into you. It usually takes 21 days to 30 days to ingrain any habit in the neurology. So listen to the alpha recording at least 30 days in a row. Now, once you've learned how to go to theta, well, you've already learned how to go to alpha. So going to theta is actually fairly simple, even though you're still going to have to listen to the theta about three times a week just so you have a reference point there. And then pretty soon after about 60 days, you'll notice that you only need to go back and hit both of those maybe once or twice a month, depending on what your need is when you use it. You'll start learning and feeling when you're not in the level that you want to be in. And whenever you feel that, all you got to do is go back, take the recording, put the headsets on, and listen to it again, and you're there instantly, bam, just like that. What is interesting is we've had a lot of graduates that have taken the Silva Ultramine classes because they have a certain project they're working on. And once they finish up working that project, they stop using the method because they've got the goal they were looking out for and they wanted to get and they've obtained it. So they just sort of stopped using the method. And I had one of my graduates that hadn't used his method for about a year and a half. And he came back to me and he goes, Dr. Lotterette, I can't remember this. I'm going to have to take the course over again. I said, no, you don't have to take it over again. Just remember the last time that you had a vivid success. Just take a deep breath. Relax. As you exhale, visualize the number three, three times. And I took him down there instantly in about one minute and he got it all back because we just had to revivify the memory. And the key to revivifying the memory was revivifying the process, which gave him the anchors, the psychological anchors and entrainment in his neurology that he already had from that deep cycling that he had when he first started taking the class. Got it all back almost instantly. Okay, let me give a little bit here about the Silva Centering Exercise. This Silva Centering Exercise is a drill that when you're learning how to go to level with consciousness, And so we do recommend that every day for about a period of 30 to 60 days, you listen to this Centering Exercise once a day so you get used to the program. You want to have conscious control at alpha at theta going into delta so you can program for your own healing for your own business processes so you can get information from the other side and when we're talking about the other side we're talking about the other side of consciousness which goes into the non-local universe so you get the attractor fields working to give you information that you normally can't perceive and it does take some time listening to these things and doing the drill now when i say doing the drill we're talking about you take part in the drill we don't want you to go to sleep during the drill so you know sit up in a chair make sure the back is straight have your feet flat on the floor have your hands in your lap and just go ahead and close your eyes and look up at about a 20 degree angle with your eyelids with your eyes closed and by just looking up at that 20 degree angle with your eyes with your eyes closed you'll trigger alpha brainwave automatically in fact you'll notice that a lot of creative people when they get their ideas their eyes shoot up bam up to the left up to the right up to the middle of the forehead And what they're doing is they're accessing old visual memories and new imaginary images. And they're getting information from both their old memories and from their memories that haven't happened yet. One of the quickest ways that I found out that most people can get information from higher intelligence after they've had the Ultramind ESP systems training course is to just basically turn their eyes upward 
Take a deep breath. Turn your eyes upward. And as you exhale, say, I wonder about X, Y, Z. If there was an answer I can get, what would it be? And hold your eyes up there and relax your mind. And now it's going to pop into your head. Happens all the time. It's that quick. It's that simple. Turning your eyes upward to that 20 degree angle puts you into alpha brainwave. When you are in alpha brainwave, you've now established the bridge between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. So now those thoughts from the unconscious mind can go with consciousness to your mind so you can use them in the real world. And something else that happens is just by taking this course and by practicing the drills in this ultra mind course, what it does, it gets you so even in your normal state, you're producing much more alpha than other people are that have not taken the course. So just by turning your eyes upward in any type of state, you still can trigger their alpha because what happens is when you hook up with higher intelligence, there is no time, there is no space, there is no distance in higher intelligence in the non-local universe. So you might get a big burst of information, boom. And so your eyes are only up there for maybe a tenth of a second, but you might take at least five minutes to download that information because it's that pertinent. You'll get all the details, boom, going off in your head and you will have a knowing a knowing about what's going on right there, right then. Jose took about 22 years to come up with these drills, and it cost him over $500,000, and that's after 22 years, and that's $500,000 of money spent back in the early 60s. So it's worth a lot of money. It is very, very valuable. So I just want you to understand the importance about doing this drill, and that will get you the skill. But you do it awake. You do it alert. You focus on what it says when it says, feel a tingling sensation of fine vibration. Well, go ahead and pretend that you have a tingling sensation and a fine vibration. So go ahead and make sure you get the directions. You learn how to be the director of your creative mechanism. You learn how to develop the self-control. And basically what you're doing is you're learning how to use more of your mind and to use it consciously. And that's what this whole thing is about. We give you subjective communication so you can virtually instantly remote view and get information from the other side. Please join me in session two. This is a Silva Centering Exercise of Jose Silva Ultramind ESP Systems. I'm John LaTourette, and I'll be your guide. In the background, you will hear the gentle tapping of the alpha sound, a natural sound that will help your brain adjust to the alpha rhythm. This recording is to be used with eyes closed, so do not play it when you are driving or performing any other activity that requires the use of your eyesight. Remember that if at any time you feel uncomfortable, Readjust your position to make yourself more comfortable. If you feel you must open your eyes for any reason, then open your eyes and make yourself comfortable. If you open your eyes, then go back to the beginning of the recording and start over. Anytime you desire to relax, mentally or verbally repeat the word, relax, and you will relax physically and mentally. This mind training exercise is adapted from one originally copyrighted by Jose Silva of Laredo, Texas in 1969 after 25 years of research. New material on this recording is copyrighted in the year 2003 by Silva Ultramind Systems. Reproduction for redistribution is strictly prohibited. Now prepare for the Silva centering exercise by finding a comfortable position. We will start this exercise with the three to one method. Find a comfortable position, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize number three several times. To help you learn to relax physically at level three, I am going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your scalp, the skin that covers your head. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your forehead, the skin that covers your forehead. You will detect a fine vibration, 
a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your eyelids and the tissue surrounding your eyes. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your face, the skin covering your cheeks. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate on the outer portion of your throat, the skin covering your throat area. You will detect a fine vibration, a tingling sensation, a feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Now release and completely relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper as we continue. Concentrate within the throat area and relax all tensions and ligament pressures from this part of your body and place it in a deep state of relaxation going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your shoulders. Feel your clothing in contact with your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of the skin covering this part of your body. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your shoulders in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your chest. Feel your clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your chest. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your chest in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate within the chest area. Relax all organs. Relax all glands. Relax all tissues, including the cells themselves, and cause them to function in a rhythmic, healthy manner. Concentrate on your abdomen. Feel the clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your abdomen. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your abdomen in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate within the abdominal area. Relax all organs. 
Relax all glands. Relax all tissues, including the cells themselves, and cause them to function in a rhythmic, healthy manner. Concentrate on your thighs. Feel your clothing in contact with this part of your body. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering your thighs. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your thighs in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Sense the vibrations at the bones within the thighs. By now, these vibrations should be easily detectable. Concentrate on your knees. Feel the skin and the vibration of your skin covering the knees. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place your knees in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. Concentrate on your calves. Feel the skin and the vibration of the skin covering your calves. Relax all tensions and ligament pressures and place these parts of your body in a deep state of relaxation, going deeper and deeper every time. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on your toes. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on the soles of your feet. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, concentrate on the heels of your feet. Enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Now, cause your feet to feel as though they do not belong to your body. Feel your feet as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet feel as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet, ankles, calves, and knees feel as though they do not belong to your body. Your feet, ankles, calves, knees, thighs, waist, shoulders, arms, and hands feel as though they do not belong to your body. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you mentally repeat, and visualize the number three, your body will relax as completely as you are now and more so every time you practice. To enter the mental relaxation level two, take a deep breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two several times and you are at level two, a deeper level than three. Level 2 is for mental relaxation, where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. To help you learn to relax mentally at Level 2, I am going to call your attention to different passive scenes. Visualizing any scene that makes you tranquil and passive will help you relax mentally. Your being at the beach on a nice summer day may be a tranquil and passive scene for you.
A day out fishing may be a tranquil and passive scene for you. A tranquil and passive scene for you may be a walk through the woods on a beautiful summer day when the breeze is just right, where there are tall shade trees, beautiful flowers, a very blue sky, an occasional white cloud, birds singing in the distance, even squirrels playing on the tree limbs. Hear birds singing in the distance. This is mental relaxation level two, where noises will not distract you. To enhance mental relaxation at level two, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. To go to your center, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one several times. You are now at level one, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, practice with the countdown deepening exercises. To deepen, count downward from 25 to 1, or from 50 to 1, or from 100 to 1. When you reach the count of 1, you will have reached a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. You will always have full control and complete dominion over your faculties and senses at all levels of the mind, including the outer conscious level. The best time to practice the countdown deepening exercises is in the morning when you wake up. Remain in bed for at least five minutes practicing the countdown deepening exercises. The second best time to practice is at night when you are ready to retire. The third best time to practice is at noon after lunch. Five minutes of practice is good. Ten minutes is very good. Fifteen minutes is excellent. To practice once a day is good. Two times a day is very good. And three times a day is excellent. If you have a health problem, practice for fifteen minutes three times a day. To come out of any level of the mind, count to yourself mentally from one to five and tell yourself that at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Then proceed to count slowly from one to two, then to three. and the count of three, mentally remind yourself that at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Proceed to count slowly to four, then to five. At the count of five, and with your eyes open, mentally tell yourself, I am wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before, and this is so. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I am going to count from ten to one. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper, and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. 10, 9, feel going deeper, 8, 7, 6, deeper and deeper, 5, 4, 3, deeper and deeper, 2, one. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. You may enter a deeper, healthier level of mind by simply relaxing your eyelids. Relax your eyelids. Feel how relaxed they are. Allow this feeling of relaxation to flow slowly downward throughout your body, all the way down to your toes. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. 
to help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I am going to count from one to three. At that moment, you will project yourself mentally to your ideal place of relaxation. I will then stop talking to you, and when you next hear my voice, one hour of time will have elapsed at this level of the mind. My voice will not startle you. You will take a deep breath, relax, and go deeper. One. Two. Three. Project yourself mentally to your ideal place of relaxation until you hear my voice again. Relax. Relax. Take a deep breath, and as you exhale, relax and go deeper. You will continue to listen to my voice. You will continue to follow the instruction to this level of the mind and at any other level, including the outer conscious level. This is for your benefit. You desire it, and it is so. Whenever you mentally or verbally mention the word, relax. All unnecessary movements and activities of your body, brain, and mind will cease immediately, and you will become completely passive and relaxed physically and mentally. I may bring you out of this level or a deeper level than this by counting to you from one to five. At the count of five, your eyes will open. You will be wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health. The difference between genius mentality and lay mentality is that geniuses use more of their minds and use them in a special manner. You are learning to use more of your mind and to use it in a special manner. The following are beneficial statements that you may occasionally repeat while at these levels of the mind. Repeat mentally after me. My increasing mental faculties are for serving humanity better. Every day, in every way, I am getting better, better, and better. Positive thoughts bring me benefits and advantages I desire. I have full control and complete dominion over my sensing faculties at this level of the mind and any other level, including the outer conscious level, and this is so. Effective Sensory Projection Statements for Success I will learn to attune my intelligence by developing my sensing faculties and to project them to any point or place on this planet so as to be aware of any actions taking place if this is necessary and beneficial for humanity. I will learn to attune my intelligence by developing my sensing faculties and to project them to any point or place on any planet within the solar system, any solar system within the galaxy, and any galaxy within the universe, so as to be aware of any actions taking place if this is necessary and beneficial for humanity. I will learn to attune my intelligence by developing my sensing faculties and to project them to the different matter kingdoms, the inanimate matter kingdom, any of its levels and depths, the animate matter kingdom with reproductive intelligence, plant life, and animal life, any of its levels and depths, and the animate matter kingdom with reproductive intelligence and an awareness of existence, the human body and mind kingdom, any of its levels and depths. I will learn to detect abnormalities whenever such abnormalities exist within any kingdom, any level, and any depth if this is necessary and beneficial for humanity. I will learn to apply corrective measures 
and to bring back to normal any abnormality found within any kingdom, any level, and any depth that this is necessary and beneficial for humanity. Negative thoughts and negative suggestions have no influence over me at any level of the mind. Positive thoughts bring me benefits and advantages I desire. You have practiced entering deep, healthy levels of mind. In your next session, you will enter deeper, healthier levels of mind faster and easier than this time. Every time you function at these levels of the mind, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help yourself physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help your loved ones physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help any human being who needs help physically and mentally. You will never use these levels of the mind to harm any human being. If this be your intention, you will not be able to function within these levels of the mind. You will always use these levels of the mind in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean, and positive, and this is so. You will continue to strive to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world to live in, so that when we move on we shall have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity, depending on their ages, as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I am going to count from one to five. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. You'll have no ill effects whatsoever in your head, no headache, no ill effects whatsoever in your hearing, no buzzing in your ears, no ill effects whatsoever in your vision and eyesight. Vision, eyesight, and hearing improve every time you function at these levels of the mind. One, two, coming out slowly now. Three, at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy sleep. Four, five, eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Let's talk for a moment about the laws of programming. Now, when you're asking for help from the other side, asking for help from higher intelligence, asking for help from the mental or spiritual dimension, it's important to remember just who you're talking to, just who you're asking for this help. They have wider concerns than you do. We tend to think of ourselves, think of our own needs, and when you start asking for help, they help on a more global level. So if you really want to get the help and you really want the other side or the spiritual dimension to help you, then let's keep some ideas in mind when we're asking for what we want, when we're picturing the solution. The first one is do unto others only what you like others to do to you. Now, remember we talked about being a liaison, an interface, a conduit to stand with a foot in each realm, one in the mental, one in the physical, and that we see what's going on in the world and we bring through us the solution. So if we were a pipe or a conduit and we bring cold water through us, it will make us cold. If we bring something warm through us and balanced, then it will make us warm and balanced just like a pipe or a conduit. So the old thing about do unto others as you would have them do unto you is an instant reaction because whatever you ask to come through you and whatever you put out is going to affect you immediately. So ask yourself, if I was on the other end of this, would I like this? Would it help me? 
And so that brings us to number two. Let's pick something that's possible. Let's pick something that you can believe, something that can be done. Now, as you move through this program, you're going to actually be doing things that a month ago you thought would be some kind of miracle. And as you keep practicing and using the conditionings, you're going to find that things are going to become normal to you that will seem like miracles to others. So when we talk about what is possible, that could be changed as you start to use these techniques in the program, as you listen to the conditioning cycles and become better at better at changing these so-called impossible miracles into your everyday doings. So when you're choosing a solution, let's keep it in the realm of possibility. If we need more money, let's ask for some more money. Let's say we're not going to have $10 million by tomorrow. Let's keep it believable, something that you can add your belief to. The next thing, again, remember we're talking to the other side that's trying to help us here on the planet. So we must make it something that will make this planet a better place to live. Because when you get help from people who want to make this planet a better place to live, you might as well ask for the kind of help that's going to come across. And then the solution must be best for everyone concerned. Let's keep a balance here. Situations that aren't balanced, like a chair, tends to fall over. So let's keep it balanced between your needs and their needs and see how you can weave those together. Then the solution must help at least two or more persons. Let's have a little wider focus about other people's needs. Let's treat these situations in an organic way. Let's treat other people like we were all in this together, like we were all on the same team. And if you program this way, if you use these laws of programming to help others, your thinking will begin to change and you'll be more and more in tune with the spiritual side with the mental dimension that wants to help you anyway. And as you become more and more in tune to that frequency, you'll get more and more help, sometimes without even having to ask for it, so that eventually you practice these techniques enough, you use these things well enough, so that you don't have to sit down and say, oh, here's another problem. You start getting those solutions as situations unfold. So remember, when it says laws of programming, let's not change them around a little bit. Well, let me just get a little bit more for me this time. Let's keep it even and balanced and remember who you're talking to and who you're asking for help. Wouldn't it be great to have the email address of the other side of higher intelligence? Wouldn't it be great to just send them an email and say, look, here's the problem I'm having. Could you please send me a solution from your vantage point, from a vantage point that can see so much more than I can? Well, that's what the mental video is designed to do, to help you inform the other side, inform the spiritual side. Look, here's what's happened in my life. Can you please help me with this? And here is a possible solution that would help me and benefit all the people concerned. You're reporting this situation to them. Now they need all the facts. So be sure that when you're creating a mental video, that you really focus on what the situation is. Now, most people like to call these problems. I like to call them situations. When we call a set of circumstances a problem, We are emotionalizing it, we're taking a snapshot, we're condensing it, and we're coalescing it and making it dense and tough to deal with. So let's start calling them situations. So you see the situation that is before you, you report that in your mental video, and then you make another video of a possible solution, your best guess at that time, your best guess of what would be perfect and complete and balanced for everyone concerned. 
And then, just like on the email, you click send. And that night, when you go to sleep, you'll be entering and standing there at the Delta doorway. And that's where the message can be transmitted. Now, you go to sleep and go through the Delta doorway every night. So a wonderful, wonderful way that Jose put this course together is let these people use exactly what they're already doing every day and let them use it in a special way. So you go to sleep every night. You go down to the Delta doorway every night. That's where the email is transmitted. Let's talk about the Delta doorway. Jose Silva says that we come through a doorway of consciousness onto this planet and that as we are, shall we say, localized in a physical body here, that the brain waves of that fetus are at delta. And then as the fetus gets a little older, they move up into theta. And then around seven years old, they move up into alpha. And when we hit puberty, we move up into alpha. So every night when we go to sleep, we have these sleep and dream cycles, about four per night. And they take about 90 minutes. And we go back down through alpha, and we get to 10. That's where we're usually dreaming. That's where our intellect goes deep enough to make some sense or just to hear what's being sent to us from the spiritual realms, from the mental realms. We pass down through that. We go down through theta, and we go down to delta. And we are right next to the doorway the doorway that we came through to be on this physical plane. That's why Jose Silva says, use these mental videos to send them through that Delta doorway and set up a pattern and set up a line so that we can get information from the other side. Now imagine if you were in a building and in this building there were so many people And they needed some guidance. They had problems. They needed guidance. They needed to know what to do. They needed help from higher intelligence. Well, like Jose talked about, if you're in the desert, make sure you drive the water truck. If you're where there's a famine, make sure you drive the food truck. And you'll always have water and food. So make sure that you are bringing help from the other side and you'll always have help. So... The job I would volunteer for, the job you volunteered for by purchasing this program and by practicing is to stand at that Delta doorway and report through the doorway what situations we're having, what things need to be solved, where we're having difficulties, and send that email through the Delta doorway and then receive that reply and put that information out in that building, out into the world. You can stand in that doorway and be a liaison, an interface, like the keyboard is an interface for the computer. And you can report what's needed and bring the information back, and you'll always have help. You'll always feel connected. Your life will flow along like a lazy river. That's how you use the Delta Doorway. That's what this program is about, allowing you to take your place, the place that human beings were hardwired to take, to stand with a foot inside that building and a foot outside that doorway and be this liaison for higher intelligence. What a great purpose to live out on this planet. So let's give an example here. Let's look at an example of how the physical works and how you can use mental video for the spiritual help. Suppose you were at a computer factory and here come all these boxes out the end of the factory and they've got a complete computer in them. And it just so happens that you need a computer with different components. You need to take a few things out. You need to put a few things in. You also need a computer that's a different color and a longer power cord. So what would you do? Would you set up outside the factory, and every time a box rolls off the line, open the box up and 
pop the case on the computer and start changing out all these parts? That's how most people live their lives. They're out there on the physical end after the product's been completed and they're trying to change things on the physical level. Wouldn't it make more sense to go through that door of that factory, to follow those boxes, to follow the production line, and go back to the source and get in the mental dimension of that company or that factory and talk to the designers and ask them to change the design. And then naturally, the changes would float through the system and they would start putting different components in there. It would be the right color. It would have the right length of cord. And you wouldn't be putting out all that effort. That's the way the universe can work for you. You can go to the source with these mental videos. You can get into the mental dimension and ask for the changes to be made there. Then, as it comes up from the spiritual or mental level, up into subatomic particles, to atomic particles, to atoms, then to molecules, And as these building blocks are put together, it's put together in another way, a way that is more beneficial to you without you having to put out so much effort in the physical dimension. And that's what we're doing with these mental videos. We're contacting the other side, sending that email across when we're at the Delta door at night when we're asleep. So you can actually be solving problems in your sleep. This program is put together so that the simple things that you do during the day anyway can be turned into what other people who haven't had this program are going to say about you. This guy works miracles. This woman does wonderful things. That teenager, they do things that amaze me. So let's talk about how I've used some of these mental videos in my life. My mother wanted to get two acres of land in Texas. And I began calling, just like the person at the end of the factory, open up those boxes, trying to change things, and I felt the effort inside me. And I stopped, and I went back to the designers, and I did a mental video and said, look, we're looking for two acres of land. It needs to have all these trees. It needs to be this price. And it needs to be this close to Austin, Texas. So I went to sleep that night. And in one of the conditionings, I pictured it being transferred. The videos being transferred, sent the emails. And the next morning, I got up and got on the telephone. And the calls were very different. And a question came to me and I said, who do you know that has two acres of land? And they'd say, well, I don't know anybody. And I said, well, I know better than that. You know someone. And so they would search their mind, and here comes a name and a phone number. And I called them. They said, no, we don't have anything. They said, you know someone who has some. You know someone who has a piece of property like this. And they said, maybe you better call this man. And they gave me the number and the address. And I called him, and he said, yes, I have a piece of property like that. And, yes, I'd love to sell it. I'm tired of messing with it. No one will buy it. I was so excited. I drove out there and looked, and my heart sank. It was full of trash and debris. And then I said, wait a minute, have a little faith here. I lowered my brain waves, went into alpha, just like you're learning to do in this program, and got the message. The trash is there to help you. Now, what kind of message is that? The trash is there to help me? Hey, guys, uh, uh, am I talking to the right guy up there? So I said, the trash is here to help me. And then I realized that man couldn't sell that piece of property with all that trash on there. Surely he would go down on the price of what it would take to clean the land. So we were able to buy the land and saved $4,000 because I took five minutes out of my busy day and did a mental video. $4,000 for one mental video. 
So if you ask me on the street, does this stuff work? Yes, it works. Another time, a woman called me and said, you know, my children, I can't communicate with them. They've got me totally shut off. Could you please come over here and talk to them? She was a single mother. On the way over, I did some remote viewing, which we'll be covering later in the program. Oh, that's the good stuff. I did some remote viewing and saw the situation. They had their backs turned to her, and they weren't listening to her. They had their hands over their ears. And so I made a mental video of that situation and then had a video of them standing on each side of her, hugging her. And I pulled over the side and sent that off. Now, I learned to get down as deep as I could by using this program. I was able to get down into Theta, and I was able to send an emergency email. I got close enough to the Delta doorway where I could just toss it the rest of the way, shall we say. When I arrived, the children were very upset and angry at their mother. They were standing there with their arms crossed. They would also cover their ears. They would turn their back on her when she was trying to speak with them. It was exactly the way I had pictured it. That's why you want to practice. It was exactly the way I had pictured it. I sat down and began to talk to the children. Words just popped into my mouth. It was like I was sitting there watching myself speak, and I knew that I was being used as a vessel to speak to these children. They began to soften. More words came out of my mouth. Words about loving your mother, and this is your mother, and look at her face. Look at her face. Do you see that she's upset? Look at her face and see how much she loves you. These words just flowed out naturally. And within about 15 minutes, there was a child standing on each side of that mother, hugging her. I still choke up when I think of it. I showed the mother how to do the mental video that afternoon after the children left. And since then, she said they have become close. They're a tight knit family. They love each other. And she said it was a miracle. And now she's become a miracle worker. Just like you can. Just like you will. If you use these techniques. Once in a class taught by Jose Silva, and what a privilege that was. And I used to think, oh, this is so special. I'm going to be such a great psychic. The way he put his program together, you didn't have to be in the room with Jose Silva. Because the real star of the show is you. You're the star of this program. He didn't have faith in just himself. He had faith in you. And he made the program so simple that you could put his program on CDs. Someone can listen to the program, practice, and do the same thing that a graduate sitting six feet away from Jose Silva could do. So once in a class with Jose Silva, a woman stood up at the back of the class, raised her hand and said, Jose, my husband and I would love to have a child. Medically, the doctors have told us it's impossible for me to have a child. What do we do? Now, the answer that Jose gave her, sure, it has the nuts and bolts of what to do. If you listen closely to the answer, it will give you an idea of his view of the universe and her place in that universe. His answer helped her to take her rightful place with a foot in each dimension and be a servant here and help with the evolution of consciousness here on this planet. He said, what you do is you make a video 
a video of you not being able to have a child, how much you want to have a child. And he said, now, in your second video, in the solution, he said, before you make your second video, I want you to go deep into level. And that's just doing one of the exercises at the end of each of these sessions. He said, I want you to go deep into level. And I want you to ask the universe. I want you to ask higher intelligence what great and wonderful things they need done on this planet. And what mind needs to come here to do those great and wonderful things and ask the universe to send that mind through you. And as that mind comes through me, here's what I will provide that mind with. I'll provide it with education and I'll teach it all the physical things. And especially I'll teach it as a child how to do these wonderful spiritual mental programs so that it can accomplish these great and wonderful things. That answer still holds me in awe today. Well, she used her mental video and the word I got back through the grapevine is she did have a child and it is an exceptional child. So his answer It's also an example for you. What great and wonderful things need to be done here on the planet? And what techniques and ability can higher intelligence send you to do these wonderful things, to help people? And later on in another session, we'll talk about healing, remote healing, so that you can help people you've never met. There's a process for doing the mental video that seems to work best for almost everybody. And so when you have some problem that you need to have some other solutions on, one of the best things to do is you first review it at beta. In other words, you sit down and I actually get a notebook in front of me and I get an ink pen and I mind map the problem I'm having. Let's say I was writing a book, for example. I would write down, I'm writing this book on XYZ. I'm having difficulty making it go right. It feels bad. I know it's missing something. And so then I write out the project. I understand the project. I can now visualize a project because I'm highly digital. I'm highly kinesthetic. So I need to do all these processes so it works good. And then what you do is you go to level using the methods we've already given you on the centering exercise and also on the coming mental video technique. We take you down through physical relaxation, mental relaxation. You go to your center and then you first supply the mental video of the problem. And then you switch the word problem into the word project. And if you'll notice the locations that you use when you say the word problem, it has a lower location in the energy field. When you think of the word project, That presupposes that there are solutions to it, and you actually access a different portion of your brain, a different portion of your energy field. Now, when you go to level, going down to the centering level of alpha brainwave, you're accessing both brain hemispheres at that time, so you get a lot more solutions. So let's say a child would just think about the imagination of coming up with solutions with a project. Well, he might get 10 things that might work on it, but if you take a child to level, Going down to the centering exercise, he might come up with 50 ways of fixing the project at that time. So just changing the word from problem to project will put the mind in the correct search for the answers to the project that you have in mind. Going to level for the centering process will then give you solutions that come in from the right brain hemisphere with remote viewing and remote influence. Now, a lot of people think that remote viewing and remote influence is one way. It's not. See, we have a higher mind, and when we come to Earth, we have certain areas that we're supposed to learn how to develop in. And when we encounter these problems and then convert them to projects, we are making a evolution towards a certain direction to give us the answers that we came down to learn at this time in our life. And so you're being influenced the other way also. And So it's just not one way. It's a two-way communication thing. Now, higher intelligence, a lot of times, is called by different names with the Silva Ultramine ESP systems. 
they used to call them counselors or guidance or tutors. And what it is, it's basically you from the other side giving yourself information because we do have a higher self of ourselves on this. We have the conscious mind here. This is what we think we are. That's the personality. There's much more to us than the personality. So we at Alpha get answers from the other side, and the other side is from us in the direction that we're going. I'm going to give an example of this, and the reason I'm giving the example of this is mainly a warning because this is a very, very powerful tool. And when you use this very, very powerful tool, sometimes the answer is so awesome that it's not just a quickie. It's not just, oh, I got this, and I can go out and get an ice cream cone or something. It's something that takes, you know, 5 or 10 or 15 years of your life, and it puts you in a different track totally. I was writing this book, uh, Warrior's Guide to Dim Mock, and I had this manuscript all done, but it just didn't feel right. There was something missing in this book. It just did not feel right. So I did the mental video technique on it. I went to level. I gave it the project I already had. I said, it doesn't feel right. I'm missing some stuff. I'd like to have the rest of the stuff that fills this in. So I get what I want on this warrior's guide to dim mock. Well, the answer that came back, I didn't get it then. I didn't get it during the night. But the next day, my wife is talking to me. I'm saying, yeah, that book, I I just can't put it out yet. It's just not ready yet. And she throws me a newspaper. Boom. You know, that's help from the other side because when they can't influence me, maybe they'll influence somebody around me to give me the information. So she tosses me this newspaper and says, hey, there's this lady over in Ashland. She's giving this seminar tomorrow on energies. And I said, that energy stuff, that doesn't work. No, I don't want to go. But I picked up the paper and looked at it, being just polite because I'm huggy-feely. And I looked at that paper and I went, you ever get hooked up to something? And I go, I got to go to this seminar. Actually, that evening, I went out and bought her book, and I read her book. And I go, nah, this stuff can't work. But I still had to go to the seminar. So the next day, I go to the seminar, and I'm angry. Why am I here with all these people? I'm a martial artist. I like to do action-orientated things. And these are a different class of people that I'm used to. So I sit myself all the way in the back of the class. There's like 152 people there. I'm in the back row. And Donna, she's up on the stage giving this seminar, And her back is towards me, and I'm getting more and more raged. But why am I here? Because what I'm doing is what? I'm full of anger. And so what I'm doing is I'm attracting more and more and more anger to myself. And she turns around, looks all the way over the crowd at me. I guess I must have been flaring like a big red light bulb or something. And she goes, you, you, I want you up here in front of the class. And I go, me? She goes, yeah, you. She can't even see me from where she's at, okay? So I go up in the front of the class, and she goes, now I want to show you guys how to control anger. (laughs) And I'm going, no way. She couldn't have noticed anything. And she did a drill with me, and my arm fell down. Now, I'm big, I'm strong, and I'm tough, and I do all this macho stuff. And with one finger, this little lady just dropped my arm. And then she taught me a drill to expel the anger. And boom, and it took about, oh, maybe 30 seconds, and I expelled the anger. And guess what? It worked. The drill now made me strong, and I'm going, wait a minute. I came asking for how to make this book on dim mock better, and I'm getting stuff on anger management. This doesn't relate. So I asked myself a little question. Well, if this was to work towards making my book on dim mock better, how would it work that way? And anyway, in the next six years, I came up with 11 videos on dim mock, three training manuals on dim mock, five videos on energy for athletes, okay? I've came up with all sorts of products that I had no clue even existed before just because, warning, you get much more than you ask for if you ask for it correctly. And the mental video is one very, very, very powerful tool. And it's just like when Dennis was talking about his real estate investment. You know, he was talking about trash is here to help me. And so I went into this seminar with the idea of getting something that would help me on the book And because I did, with that segment intending, I got a lot more than just the information that would help me on that one little $20 book. And I got a lot of information that would help a lot of other people, too. It would help my family with their health. It would help my athletes. Five of the videos I came out with was energy drills for athletes, how to make them stronger, faster, peak performance, and also on how to center them better. So there are all kinds of benefits to this.
Another question that comes up, if people have bought other products and they have a question like, well, I've already got product X and it teaches me good habit control and I'm wanting to know where your product will do something that the habit program that I've already got won't help me at. So what's the difference here? And it's a good question. Number one, the habit control program they have is probably a very good program. The point is, is you have a program that will teach you how to do something under, say, hypnosis, which is a very good tool, but you now don't have the conscious bridge hookup. So you put on the tape, you put on the CD, you put on the headsets, you go down to level, you're basically a zombie half asleep, and you just hear this recording and it goes over and over and over, and after 21 days to 31 days, then the habit has disappeared. Well, you get that with the Alpha Brainwave Silva Ultramind systems, and the thing is, is that's only a tiny part of what you're getting with this system. The system that we're talking about here is a system for consciously remote viewing. That's having your consciousness go to any place on the planet, to any person on the planet, to any project on the planet. If you have a business project, you can remote view it to see what the future ramifications are going to be. If you have a relationship problem, you can remote view it to see how they think. If you have a health problem, you can remote view it to see what's occurring inside and outside of the body, inside and outside of the energy fields. But more importantly than that, after you've seen the problems, you now can convert them to projects. You now can go back inside and use the advanced phase of Silva Ultramind, and you can actually do remote influencing and fix these for the best of all concerned. And so I would say it's probably... 200, 300, 500 times more potent than, say, just a habit control technique. I personally like to teach it so you have control of your own destiny. And that's basically what we're teaching in the Silva Ultramind class, is giving you tools to control your own destiny. And so I suggest that when you focus on the next conditioning cycle, on the mental video, pay attention to all the drills, and just ask yourself the question, if I were to use this, how would I use it for my the best way possible. Please join me in session four. This is the mental video exercise of Jose Silva's Ultramine ESP systems. I am John LaTourette, and I'll be your guide. In the background, you will hear the gentle tapping of the alpha sound a natural sound that will help your brain adjust to the alpha rhythm. This recording is to be used with eyes closed, so do not play it when you are driving or performing in any activity that requires the use of your eyesight. Remember that if, at any time you feel uncomfortable, readjust your position to make yourself more comfortable. If you feel you must open your eyes for any reason, then open your eyes and make yourself comfortable. If you open your eyes... Then go back to the beginning of the recording and start over. Anytime you desire to relax, mentally or verbally, repeat the word relax. And you will relax physically and mentally. This mind training exercise is adapted from one originally copyrighted by Jose Silva of Laredo, Texas in 1969 after 25 years of research. New material and reproduction for redistribution is strictly prohibited. Now prepare for the Silva mental video exercise by finding a comfortable position. We will start this exercise with a 3 to 1 method. Find a comfortable position, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize number 3 three times. To help you learn to relax physically at level 3, I am going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your face. Relax your throat. 
Relax your shoulders. Relax your chest externally and internally. Relax your abdominal area externally and internally. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you mentally repeat and visualize the number three, your body will relax as completely as you are now and more so every time you practice. To enter mental relaxation level two, take a deep breath and while exhaling, Mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times. And you are at level two. Level two is for mental relaxation, where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. To improve mental relaxation at level two, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. To go to your center, take a deep breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. You are now at level one, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I am going to count from ten to one. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper, and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Ten. Nine. Feel going deeper. Eight. Seven. Six. Deeper and deeper. Five, four, three, deeper and deeper. Two, one, you are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. Laws of Programming The following laws are to be considered when programming. Do to others only what you would like others to do to you. The solution must help to make this planet a better place to live. The solution must be the best for everybody concerned. The solution must help at least two or more persons. The solution must be within the possibility area. Principles to keep in mind when programming. The following principles apply to programming. Objective physical communication takes place at the beta left brain dimension using the objective physical senses. The hearing is used for perception and the voice is used for transmission. Subjective spiritual communication takes place at the alpha right brain dimension by using the spiritual senses. Visualization is used for perception and imagination is used for transmission. In the objective physical dimension, the past is behind us, the present is our present position, and the future is ahead of us. In the subjective spiritual dimension, the past is to your right, the present is centered straight ahead, and the future is to your left. How to use mental video for the selected problem. Programming a technique, the mental video technique that you can use for problem solving. 
Whenever you need to solve a problem, or make a decision, or obtain guidance with the mental video technique, proceed in the following manner. At beta, with your eyes open, mentally create, with visualization, a mental video of a problem or the existing situation. Include everything that belongs to the animate matter kingdom. Animate matter means everything that contains life. After you have completed the mental video of the problem, use visualization to review it at beta with your eyes closed. Later, when you are in bed and ready to go to sleep, go to your center with a 3 to 1 method. Once you are at your center, review the mental video that you created of the problem or the existing situation when you are at the beta level. After you have reviewed the problem, mentally convert the problem into a project then create with imagination a mental video of the solution. The mental video of the solution should contain a step-by-step -step procedure of how you desire the project to be resolved. After both of the mental videos have been completed, go to sleep with the intention of delivering the mental videos to your tutor while you sleep. Take for granted that the delivery will be made. During the next three days, look for indications that point to the solution. Every time you think of the project, think of the solution that you created in the mental video in a past tense sense. You have practiced entering deep, healthy levels of mind. In your next session, you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind faster and easier than this time. Every time you function at these levels of the mind, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help yourself physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help your loved ones physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help any human being who needs help physically and mentally. You will never use these levels of the mind to harm any human being. If this be your intention, you will not be able to function within these levels of the mind. You will always use these levels of the mind in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean, and positive, and this is so. You will continue to strive to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world to live in, so that when we move on, we shall have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity, depending on their ages, as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I am going to count from one to five. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. You'll have no ill effects whatsoever in your head, no headache, no ill effects whatsoever in your hearing, no buzzing in your ears, no ill effects whatsoever in your vision and eyesight. Vision, eyesight, and hearing improve every time you function at these levels of your mind. One, two, coming out slowly now. Three, at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy sleep. Four, five. Eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. Now let's talk about remote influencing someone's health by using your mind in a very special way. Now that's not that far out. For instance, when someone talks to you in a physical sense, or you even have a thought, it can actually change the chemistry of your whole body instantly. That's how a lie detector works. They put a machine on two fingers and they check the electrical resistance of your body. And with one thought, 
you change instantly the electrical resistance in the body. One tiny thought can change it. So you can influence someone from a distance and affect their health using the three scenes technique. Now, earlier we talked about being outside the factory and changing things physically. That's where doctors work. We as intuitives, medical intuitives, we as healers, and I'm saying we now because you're getting well into the program, you've already joined the group here. You're beginning to be able to do these things by using your ordinary brain and your ordinary mind in a very special way. So doctors set up outside the factory and they make their physical changes. And thank goodness for them. They have their medicines. They have their knives. They have their radiation treatments. They work on the physical plane. Now, we're talking about working on the mental plane where you have this other foot standing that these doctors don't have. You have this other foot standing in the mental or spiritual dimension where you can use the three scenes technique to actually affect someone's health. So remember, again, in the factory, we went way back up into the mental part of the factory by working our way back. And we talked to the engineers or the person who draws the blueprint, and we changed the pattern so that as things started shaking out, going down the assembly line, working their way up through the building blocks and becoming matter, working their way up into the physical dimension, that the pattern would change how something was put together. So it would start at the mental or spiritual level, work its way up, gradually into becoming a physical result. And now you have a key. Now you have the ability to communicate with the other side. Now you have the ability to make changes with the three scenes technique to be able to change someone's health from a distance. So on the first scene, you picture the situation. Now let's talk about that for a minute. What you're really doing is if you're going to ask someone for some help, you need to give them the address. If you're calling for a tow truck or a mechanic, you give them the address. You take your car in to get it fixed. You tell the mechanic what it's doing, what the problem is. You don't just park it and say, help my car out. You get into details. You tune the mechanic in to what the problem is. And when you make your first scene on the three scenes technique, you're tuning in to exactly what the problem is. So that when you transmit this, higher intelligence will know what solution to bring out. We don't just do a general thing, say, help out Bob. We tune to the problem, exactly to the situation, as we're calling them now. And we get the exact frequency. And then we report that first scene. So we see the problem in the scene. And then next, we see ourselves doing something to help the situation. We see ourselves in action. Whatever information we got at the intuitive level by listening to one of the CDs or listening to the alpha sound, whatever we got in that session that we did about this problem that we got at level, we see a scene of us using those solutions. And then once we visualize those solutions in the second scene and the third scene, we visualize the final result. So if you had gone back into that factory, of course you would go back and talk to the person who drew up the blueprints and said, you know, here's the situation that we have and here's my possible solution. And here's the final result that I would like to see happen. And so you make these three scenes and report those, and you watch for them to come up through these building blocks and manifest in the physical. Now, sometimes it happens instantly. Sometimes it takes a little while. Sometimes we need a little more fine-tuning. Sometimes in the first scenes, we didn't quite get all of the situation in. Sometimes in the second scene, we didn't quite get all the possible solutions that would be helpful. So we'll get reports. 
we'll get reports. And that's how you use the three scenes technique. That's how you can use it. And here's how I've used it. I was in West Virginia, up in the mountains, in a cabin, writing a book, and I got an emergency phone call. And a friend of my sister's, named Janice, was going to have to go in Monday morning for an operation. Now, this is on Friday. And my sister said, I just mentioned you to Janice, and she seemed to light up. She said, I don't know why, but you need to call Dan. Yes, call him. I think he can help me. Now, she didn't know me. So my sister said she has a cyst in her abdomen about the size of a peach. And the doctors are going to cut her open and take it out Monday. She doesn't do well with anesthesia. It's a terrible thing for her to have an operation. Can you do something? And I told her I will work on it under one condition, that Janice, when she goes into the hospital Monday, she insists, and they'll tell her no three times, she insists on having another examination, whether it was an X-ray or sonogram. She said, okay, I promise. I said, thank you. I did the three scenes technique. I looked at the situation down in Alpha, and I saw this just kind of a lump there. And my information that I got was that I just need to see it swept away and thrown out of the body, just dismantled the same way it was built. If the body can build it, it can dismantle it. So dismantle it and throw it away. And in the third scene, I saw her being perfectly well and fine, leaving the hospital on Monday with no operation. Well, I got a call Monday afternoon at 1 o'clock, and they sounded so scared. They were afraid. They said, we went in there, and the doctors insisted that she have this operation, and you were right. She had to tell them three times. And then they did the test, and the doctor came out and said, there's something wrong with this test. We have to do it again. So they did the test again. And then the doctor came out and was literally scratching his head, which, by the way, was a part of my third scene. And he said, we can't find this now. So there must have been a problem with the first test. Well, Janice wasn't going to let that go. She said, well, you felt it. Do you feel it now? And he's examining her. And he says, no. Maybe it was gas. <laughs> so Janice walked out of the hospital that Monday with no operation because I had taken the time to learn the three scenes technique, just like you're going to learn the three scenes technique. And I used my ordinary brain my ordinary mind, just like you will, to help someone with a health problem. Now I'm going to talk about helping someone when it really matters, a family member. One night about 2 o'clock in the morning, there were some rocks hitting my second story window and I looked down and there was my mother. I went down and opened the door and she said, I just put your father in intensive care. He's had a heart attack and they don't know if he's going to make it. Well, I got dressed, got in her car and we drove to the hospital. Now I come from a sales background. I'm a pretty good salesman. I had a tough sale to make. He was going to have a visit in the ICU ward at 6 o'clock that morning. And the doctor had sort of suggested it might be the last visit. So I had to sell my mother on the idea of letting me go in there instead of her missing what could be her last chance to say goodbye to her husband. That was a tough sale. Fortunately, my mother had seen me do a few things before. So at 6 o'clock that morning, 
I was the one who walked into that ICU unit. And what I saw just scared me so much. There were tubes coming in and out of my dad. There were machines hooked up to him. And there was this one machine that was showing his heartbeat. And it was sporadic and weak and too strong and too fast and too slow. They couldn't stabilize his heart. And I could see he was in tremendous pain. He could barely move his arm to clutch his chest. And he pointed at his heart. He couldn't even speak. Well, on the way down there, I had remote viewed to see what the problem was inside his heart. Now, again, you'll be able to do these things. They might sound like miracles now. One person's miracle is another person's everyday task. So I walked over to my father. And I began to use the same visualization of healing that I had used remotely. I put my hand on his chest as I had been instructed to do in Alpha. And I felt this energy coming out of my hand into his chest. After about two minutes of standing there visualizing and using the three scenes technique, the little machine on the wall started to settle down. And I was watching this machine and it started to get more and more normal and ease up. It was more consistent The little lines jumping up were more even. And I looked down and there was a smile on my father's face. And he knew he was going to make it. And I knew he was going to make it. And when I walked out of that room to get to my mother and report to her what had happened, I had to go by the waiting room. And I looked in there and I saw all these relatives worried about mothers and fathers and children that were in the ICU units and just able to sit there and only wring their hands and worry. And I knew right then I would never have to just sit there and wring my hands when a loved one needed me. That I had used the same program that you're listening to and practiced it and practiced it enough on other people so that when the chips were down, when it was a matter of life and death for my loved one, I was able to help. And you'll never have to wring your hands again and just wonder, what could I do? Oh, if I could just do something. You'll be able to do something. You'll be able to have an effect. You'll be able to help someone. And by the way, my father spent another 20 years on this planet. I got a call one night at 1130. And it was a man I didn't know on the phone. He said, is this Dennis? And I said, yes. He said, is this Dennis Higgins? And I said, yes. And he said, my brother is Harry and he must know you. And right away I said, oh, yes, I love Harry. He's always called me on the phone and says, young Dennis, how are we doing today? Harry is like a brother to me. And he said, well, Harry's had a stroke. He's in the hospital up here in Dallas, Texas. His right side is paralyzed. And the doctor said it doesn't look good. He scribbled a note on a piece of paper with his left hand. And we finally got the numbers and figured out the name. And he said, call Dennis. So he said, could you help me with something? And I said, what? And he goes, why am I calling you? (laughs) And I said, because I can help your brother. I said, do you have faith in your brother's judgment? And he said, yes. And I said, do you have faith in what could be the last message your brother ever wrote to you to carry that out to the best of your ability? And he said, yes. And I said, okay, I need you to use the love for your brother, and I'm going to tell you what to do. Tomorrow, you promise me that you go in there and you're the one that goes in there to visit Harry. None of the other relatives, not the parents. You have to be the first one in there tomorrow morning. And you go up and you take Harry's hand and you just shake it up and down like you were shaking his hand normally. And you tell him these exact words. I called Dennis and he told me to do this. 
and that you would be all right. Now, can you say that? And he repeated it back to me exactly. And I said, if you love your brother and want to help your brother, be sure you say those exact words. So he promised me that's what he would do. He hung up. And immediately I sat down and did my remote viewing. I did my remote influencing. And I needed someone in Harry's aura, in Harry's energy field, to do a healing on Harry. And I wasn't there in Dallas. I was in another town. So I had a connection with his brother. So I remotely influenced his brother and filled his brother with healing energy and visualized that when he shook Harry's hand, all this healing energy spurred on by his love and desire to help Harry would flow into Harry and heal him. And then I saw Harry being perfect. Well, the next day, about 3 o'clock, the phone rang. And what I heard on that even makes me emotional today. I heard, Young Dennis, how are things going? It was Harry. He regained his speech. He could move. He could walk. And Harry still thanks me for that. So these are techniques that you can do. This is why you were hardwired this way. Why do you think you were given this equipment? You were given this equipment so that you could function this way. Why was this program sent to Jose Silva? Why have the good people at Nightingale Connick, why are they putting this on a CD? And why did you buy this program? You're buying this program to take your rightful place as a healer, as someone who can affect the planet, affect the outcome, and make this a better world in which to live. When we're doing the three scenes technique or remote viewing, remote healing, remote influencing, we have a desire to do that. And we have a belief in our ability because we've seen this work. As you gradually build your confidence, and that's where you can use this workbook that comes with this program to record your positive successes and tune in to those frequencies of when you accomplish this. And so you build up your belief in yourself and your own abilities and the way the universe is structured and in these techniques through successes. And then you have an expectancy. You expect it to be that way. So desire, belief, and expectancy. Now, if I came to you and told you it wasn't going to work all the time, Would you hit the stop button on the CD and say, well, if it doesn't work all the time, I don't want to use it? What if I came to you and said you can make it work most of the time? That most of the time you'll be able to do some remote healing, to help someone, to save a life, to change a life, to help someone in need, to change some pretty tough circumstances. And then sometimes those results won't be there. You'll fine-tune, you'll change, and that thing happens anyway, or a person leaves the planet anyway, or a situation doesn't quite come out the way you want it. We're not saying that you can change everything in your environment. We're saying you can change most of the things in your environment. So when you work on a project and you do your best and it just doesn't come out that way, that doesn't say you're not good at this. It doesn't say you're not cut out to be a functioning, effective, intuitive here on the planet and change things from a distance. What it means is that thing just wasn't meant to happen. So I have faith, Jose Silva had faith, that most of the things you do will come out fine. So let's create a space now for it not to come out fine all the time. And let's have a place to put that in your thinking. And you can say, well, I'll get better at that. Or maybe that was meant to happen. So it's important to review your successes. 
review your successes over and over and what this work that work that's great and on the ones that aren't successful just say well what else could i have done or what will i do next time we're going to be talking about the three scenes technique that's the next drill that we're going to do in the audio recording and on the three scenes technique the eyes are probably one of the most important things that you can use to focus your brain into certain areas they found out many years ago that the eyes have visual components if you look up a certain direction you have visual components if you look to the side you have auditory components if you look down you have kinesthetic or internal dialogue components and so when you're doing the mental screen, if you look up about 15 to 20 degrees, you will actually access what we call the visual component. And if you access with your eyes closed, then your mind automatically goes into alpha brainwave, which means that you now have the bridge between your conscious mind and your unconscious mind. And the corpus callosum is now working between your left brain hemisphere and your right brain hemisphere. So it's very, very important to just look up when you're doing it. A good way to do that when you're practicing the relaxation drill, of course, when you're doing the visualization of three, 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 you know, look up as you see those numbers up there. And then you take another deep breath, just drop the eyes when you take the deep breath. And when you exhale, look up and go two, 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 take another deep breath. And as you exhale, look up and go one, one, one. And so that will teach you to access and hook in and anchor the visual to the breathing cycle. So it's there automatically when you think of the pictures from then on. Now, what happens is, is Dennis was talking about how thoughts affect people around you. Well, thoughts also affect you. And they have many, many scientific studies where they've done with blood pressure monitors on people's fingers. And they'll notice that the blood pressure monitor will have an effect on their monitor when somebody talks negatively about someone that they know. But if they talk negatively about someone they don't know, then there won't be any effect on their blood pressure at all. Now, what happens with these people that have these blood pressure monitors attached to them is they don't consciously have a clue that anybody's being talked about at all. But if they go into alpha and they hook up and then they get in tune with their body, then they can hook into and feel when the blood pressure does change. They can also sometimes get a picture of who they're thinking about when it does change. Very, very good research done on that. So thoughts affect our own body, our own cellular level. That's the reason that we say positive thoughts bring us the benefits and advantages we have. So we always stick that in. Now, what happens is a lot of people, they get into stress and they go, well, I'm all stressed out. This isn't going to work for me. My gosh, it doesn't seem to be working at all. I'm just so angry about this or I'm so depressed about this or whatever. Now, what happens is if when you do the alpha conditioning properly and you get that 30 days of using that alpha like you're supposed to, even though you don't think it's working, when you take a deep breath and you visualize that number three, three times, your body has a psychological and a physiological anchor to go into a relaxation mode for physical relaxation. Now, your brain is still going to be chattering like a monkey up there. But then again, we have an anchor for mental relaxation. Take a deep breath, and as you exhale, relax and visualize the number two three times. And it'll take you right down past where you thought you were at. And then we have another drill, another anchor, to get you down to your centering point, which is to take a deep breath, and as you exhale, visualize the number one three times. And that gets you right down there. Now, if you aren't deep enough yet, to release the stress, then it does happen. All you got to do is count down from 10 to 1. I'm going to count down from 10 to 1. With each descending number, I'm going to go deeper and deeper. 10, 9, feel going deeper. 8, 7, 6, deeper and deeper. 5, 4, 3, deeper and deeper. 2, 1, And you will be at the centering place at that time, and you will have controlled your stress. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in a couple really simple ones to use with your energy fields right now. And what happens is is when people go into stress, all the blood in their frontal lobes of their brain recedes. And the only thing that's left is the angry human, the primitive. 
And all you have to do with a physical move to get the blood back up to the frontal lobe is just reach up with your right hand and touch your forehead about an inch above the right eye and touch it above the left eye and just hold those pads there just lightly, no pressure, just touch. It's like hooking up a battery and just take a deep breath. Exhale and just hold for about a minute and you'll notice that all the blood goes back to your brain, which is really important because when the blood is out of your brain, your IQ drops about 50%. Okay, and also your immune system shuts off and your energy start running backwards with your meridian system. So that works really, really good. I've had some people that are so, I guess, wired weird from anger and stress for so long that I've actually taught them how to hold those neurovasculars first before I taught them how to do the Silva centering drill because they needed it. Now, another one that you can do when you're going into what we call triple warmer arousal, and that's basically when the fight or flight is turned on so much that nothing seems to work. All you do is you put your three fingers together. That's the tips of your thumb, your index finger, and your middle finger, and you put them in the hollow of your neck. Just touch right there. And then with the other hand, you reach up and you put the pads of the index finger, the middle finger, and the ring finger on the side of your head at the temple, about where the earpiece of your glasses go. And just hold that for about a minute. Take a deep breath. And again, this is a neurovascular and will bring blood back to where it's supposed to go. And then after about a minute, you switch over and do the other side and hold those for about a minute. And you'll notice that it will normalize the fight or flight response so the stress will automatically go down to the level that normal humans have it at. And then, of course, then you go back into the Silva conditioning cycle going three, 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 two, 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 one, one, one. Then you're at your centering point. It's very easy. Now, how do we detect our own health problems? How do we fix things that are going wrong with us? How do we tune in to where we're supposed to be going and keep our body and our minds in the proper shape to go where we're supposed to be going with our purpose throughout life? I'm a martial arts athlete. I'm 60 years old. I broke my back. It's not really good for a martial arts athlete to be around in a wheelchair with a broken back. So my broken back, because of things I did at Alpha Brainwave, going down to Theta, going down to Delta, so I could get the information from higher intelligence, made me able to start doing my skills again and teaching my skills again in six days, which really amazed the doctor. He had to check the actual vertebrae on the x-ray again to see what was really going on there. Now, the thing is, let's say you're starting to slow down a little bit. Let's say that you've got the aging process in there. Well, what you can do is you go, I've got this aging process going there, and I want to get myself younger again so I can do longer what I do so well. And so then automatically you start finding out certain things about diet, certain things that are very, very good for you, other things that are not so good for you. And then you start going in energy testing through the alpha brainwave theta drills going down to level. If I do X and I take this, say, growth hormone precursor vitamin type therapy, what's going to happen? And then just look at what you're doing here and notice how you're getting younger after a year of doing these type of skills and drills. There are ways of getting the lymphatic system started. And what happens is, is if you look at yourself and you say, well, the lymphatic system is getting a little bit clogged. If there was a way to fix this, how would I do it? And all of a sudden you'll go, oh rebounders they work on three different energies they work on gravity they work on acceleration they work on deacceleration and anybody that has a lymphatic problem they're cured in about three to five minutes a day of bouncing on this little mini trampoline and so you'll just start seeing all these solutions instead of seeing all these problems now the neat thing about it is is you can't see the solution unless you see the problem first at alpha, theta, using the centering cycles, using the theta brainwave cycles, at that time, you first give it the problem, you change it to a project, and then you go for the solutions in mind that will handle that and take care of it in the way that gets you going towards your purpose in life. And then on the three scenes technique, it's very, very important to use that also because scene one is we're seeing the problem, okay? But if we only see the problem, Pretty soon we're building in more and more of the problem. That's like saying, don't think of a pink elephant. Don't think of a pink elephant. All the elephant does is get pinker and bigger. Okay. And the only way to change that without doing lots of 20 years of, uh, say, Zen Buddhism thought stoppage technique is to tell them what to think of instead. 
And the Silva Ultramind techniques do that. It says, now take action towards what you are going to be doing to get the solution that you have in mind. And so that presupposes changing from a problem to a project, which uses a different part of your brain. And now you're actually going and working on the project, taking steps in the objective world, accomplishing what you have in mind as far as a solution. And then on the third step, of course, you do have the solution. Now, getting into the healing technique that Dennis was talking about before, what they have found out is if you do the healing energies in the presence up close, it's really very powerful when compared to just the mental energy at a distance. So if you're going to use a healing technique on somebody, it's really nice to use both. My boy, when he was eight years old, did his boy thing and ran into a barbed wire fence and literally gashed his shin open about three inches and about a half inch down. So we had it all stitched up and he got the normal shots, but it still developed this fantastic inflammation. And so my wife is all concerned and, you know, I did a little healing technique and it's a simple healing technique. I just put the the right hand on one side of the leg, the left hand on the other side of the leg. and And I just transferred energy through my right hand, through his leg, through my left hand, through my body. And I did that with the positive intentions of what three scene technique, seeing it totally healed. So I'm taking the action as I'm seeing the final result in my hand. And I did that for two minutes. And then what I did is I switched polarity as I switched over. Now I had my right hand on the other side of the leg, left hand on this side of the leg. And then I did the same thing, running the energy through the reverse way. Now, that night, I went to level, making sure I did the three scenes technique. And scene one is I saw his leg the way it was before I went to bed. Scene two is I saw it healing In scene three, I saw it totally healed. Now, when I went to bed, it was still pussy, still really inflamed. It had like one inch of inflammation all the way around this big slash on his leg. The next morning, the whole doggone thing was healed. It was pink. All the inflammation was gone. And I just went, wow, again, because every time that you do this stuff, you're amazed. Okay, you still wonder, my gosh, is this going to work the next time? And it always does. And it's based upon with a family member, desire, belief and expectancy. Now, sometimes when you're working on a healing technique, I have a relative that was in a home and he had all the ailments that seemed to go with people that are 87 years old and and he just wasn't really there much anymore and everybody wanted me to heal him. And I just told these people, I said, sometimes the best way to heal a person is to have them cross over. I said, so why don't we just do a visualization technique and leave the third scene for what's the best for him and just leave golden light in there. Well, we did that, and the next day, he crossed over. And he had been lingering for seven months. And I think that's a good answer in some cases, okay? So sometimes the solution that we get might not be the solution that some people want, but it still might be the best concern for all people involved. Now, getting into what we are talking about with brains and eyes and how the eyes access different parts of the creative mechanism, People seem to be hardwired basically the same way. In other words, they all seem to see past, they see the present, they see the future. Again, though, according to how you're conditioned, according to some sort of neurological type differences, some people actually, like Jose Silva, he would see when he's at beta brainwave, he would see the present right in front of him. Some people actually have the present inside of them. They associate it in everybody. They're the kinesthetic, loving, huggy-feely type of people. They don't feel good unless they get the three hugs a day. Other people would never hug anybody because they see everybody out in front of them, even in the present. Jose Silva saw his future still in front of him, just going straight out in front of him, which is really good. That's called being associated in time. Other people see their future a little bit out to the right of them a little bit. Okay, some people, some guys are really different, might see it out to their left. On their past, Jose saw his right behind him. That's where he would visualize it. That's very common. Another common one is they see their past back to the left side. So there's various ways of doing it here, and they're all good. They all work, and you don't even have to know which one is best for you because all you have to do is do the three scenes technique, and when you use past, present, and future, do the drill as we explain it in the upcoming session and just pretend it will work. And my gosh, I bet it will. Now, if you have any troubles with it, which I don't think you will, just take a deep breath, turn your eyes up, and think of something in the future. Your eyes will go accidentally and automatically to where they're supposed to go. If you want to think about something in the past, well, just take a deep breath, turn your eyes upward, and think of something in the past, and your eyes will automatically go to somewhere they're supposed to go. 
Now, this is presupposing that you're thinking of a visual picture. If you're thinking of a kinesthetic, then it's going to change a little bit. So I would suggest that you stick with the visual pictures, then add in the other auditory kinesthetics, gustatory, viscerals to it, the emotions to it at that point. That will give you the desire, the belief, and the expectancy to make it much more powerful. We're giving you a lot of drills, and I would suggest that what you do is between every drill that we give you, because they're all new and they're all different, is go back in between every one of them, re-listen to the centering drill. Get used to that. Get used to that so you can do it on automatic process. Then go ahead and listen to this three scenes technique, and then go to the ones past that point. Now, what this does is, is if you continue practicing the centering drill, It puts into your mind all those other processes that are left out of the other drills past that point because that's the foundation of the whole grid work of all the psychic influence work you're going to be doing. So you you do need to listen to that at least about 10 total hours. And the easy way to do it is to put it in between the other drills when you do them. And then after you get all these audios down and you learn how to do the skills on them, then I would suggest that every day for at least 30 days, practice the centering drill itself. Just go ahead and do the centering drill, listen to the audio, and do it with the headset on. Okay, and then before you go and do any remote viewing, just for the heck of it, go back down and practice the centering drill. And then what you do is you go and do your remote influence drill or your remote viewing drill or your three scenes drill or whatever drill you want to do because at that time you will be where you're supposed to be. Otherwise, it's like trying to get a cup of water out of the kitchen, but you're outside by the tree, and you sort of wonder why the faucet doesn't work, where you're in the wrong room, you're out by the tree. got to be where the skill takes place at. Now, after you learn how to do all this stuff, you can actually just take a deep breath, visualize the number three, three times, and you will be physically relaxed. And then you can take a deep breath and visualize the number two, and you will be mentally relaxed. And then you can take a deep breath and visualize the number one, three times and you will be at your center and then you can do any drill that you want to from that time so after you've learned it you can go ahead and do it without the conditioning cycles as per listening on this auditory i would still suggest even six months down the road pull this centering drill out and re-anchor it into your neurology by listening to it again because the more that you listen to it the better you're going to get at helping yourself in business and in your family relationships and your healing and romance in fact anything that you want to put it towards please join me in session six as we do the three scenes technique This is the three scenes technique mental training exercise of Jose Silva's Ultramine ESP systems. I'm John LaTourette and I'll be your guide. In the background you will hear the gentle tapping of the alpha sound, a natural sound that will help your brain adjust to the alpha rhythm. This recording is to be used with eyes closed, so do not play it when you are driving or performing any other activity that requires the use of your eyesight. Remember that if, at any time, you feel uncomfortable, readjust your position to make yourself more comfortable. If you feel you must open your eyes for any reason, then open your eyes and make yourself comfortable. If you open your eyes, then go back to the beginning of the recording and start over. Anytime you desire to relax, mentally or verbally, repeat the word, relax, and you will relax physically and mentally. This mind training exercise is adapted from one originally copyrighted by Jose Silva of Laredo, Texas in 1969 after 25 years of research. New material on this recording is copyrighted in the year 2003 by Silva Ultramind Systems. Reproduction for redistribution is strictly prohibited. Now prepare for the three scenes technique exercise by finding a comfortable position. We will start this exercise with a three to one method. Find a comfortable position. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize number three, three times. To help you learn to relax physically at level three, I am going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Relax your scalp. Relax.
relax your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your face. Relax your throat. Relax your shoulders. Relax your chest externally and internally. Relax your abdominal area externally and internally. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you mentally repeat and visualize the number three, your body will relax as completely as you are now and more so every time you practice. To enter mental relaxation level two, take a deep breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times and you are at level two. Level two is for mental relaxation where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. To improve mental relaxation at level two, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. To go to your center, take a deep breath and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. You are now at level one, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I am going to count from ten to one. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Ten. Nine. Feel going deeper. Eight. Seven. Six. Deeper and deeper. Five. Four. Three. Deeper and deeper. Two. One. You are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. Laws of Programming The following laws are to be considered when programming. Do to others only what would you like others to do to you. The solution must help to make this planet a better place to live. The solution must be for the best for everybody concerned. The solution must help at least two or more persons. The solution must be within the possibility area. Principles to keep in mind when programming. The following principles apply to programming. Objective physical communication takes place at the beta left brain dimension using the objective physical senses. The hearing is used for perception and the voice is used for transmission. Subjective spiritual communication takes place at the alpha right brain dimension by using the spiritual senses. Visualization is used for perception and imagination is used for transmission. In the objective physical dimension, the past is behind us. The present is our present position and the future is ahead of us. In the subjective spiritual dimension, the past is to your right. The present is centered straight ahead and the future is to your left. We will now impress new information for your benefit, the mental screen. To locate your mental screen, begin with your eyes closed, 
turn slightly upward from the horizontal plane of sight at an angle of approximately 20 degrees. The area that you perceive with your mind is your mental screen. Without using your eyelids as screens, sense your mental screen to be out, away from your body. To improve the use of your mental screen, project images or mental pictures onto the screen, especially images having color. Concentrate on mentally sensing and visualizing true color. We will now impress and program the three scenes technique, a technique that you can use to help you implement your decisions and the guidance that you receive. When you desire to use the three scenes technique, go to your center with a three to one method. Create and project onto your mental screen directly in front of you using visualization an image of the existing situation. Recall details of what the situation looks like in this first scene. Make a good study of the existing situation so you are completely aware of all aspects of it. If you have programmed for this project previously, then take into account any changes that have taken place since your most recent programming session. After making a good study of the existing situation, then shift your awareness to your left, approximately 15 degrees. In a second scene, to the left of the first scene, use imagination to mentally picture yourself taking action and doing something to implement your decisions and to follow the guidance you have received and imagine the desired changes beginning to take place. Now, in the third scene, another 15 degrees further to your left, use your imagination to create and project an image of the situation the way you desire for it to end up. Imagine many people benefiting. The more people who benefit, the better. Anytime in the future when you think of this project, visualize, recall the image that you created of the desired end result in the third scene. You can use the three scenes technique to help a person solve a problem, such as a health problem, a relationship problem, or a business problem. When you are in a person's presence and they are in a receptive state, such as being at the alpha level or being in a state of confusion or a state of suspense or anticipation, then enter your level by defocusing your vision, the so-called daydream mechanism, and program them with the use of the three scenes technique. Always keep the laws of programming in mind and remember that the solution must be the best for everybody concerned. You have practiced entering deep, healthy levels of mind. In your next session, you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind faster and easier than this time. Every time you function at these levels of the mind, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help yourself physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help your loved ones physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind to help any human being who needs help physically and mentally. You will never use these levels of the mind to harm any human being. If this be your intention, you will not be able to function within these levels of the mind. You will always use these levels of the mind in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean, and positive, and this is so. You will continue to strive to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world to live in, so that when we move on, we shall have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity, depending on their ages, as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I am going to count from one to five. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before. You'll have no ill effects whatsoever in your head, no headache, no ill effects whatsoever in your hearing, no buzzing in your ears, no ill effects whatsoever in your vision and eyesight. Vision, eyesight, and hearing improve every time you function at these levels of the mind. One, two... Coming out slowly now. Three. At the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, 
healthy sleep. 4. 5. Eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine, in in perfect health, feeling better than before. Let's talk about remote viewing. That's the exciting part. The first time I ever heard about remote viewing, I said, wow, that is just so fantastic, so out of the ordinary. How can those people do that? Well, in a short time, you'll be able to do it. Remember, they're not wired up any differently than you are. They're just using what you use every day in a very special way. Jose says that the difference between genius mentality and ordinary lay mentality is that geniuses use more of their mind and use it in a very special way. So that's what you're learning to do is become a genius. Simply by breathing, closing your eyes, visualizing certain things and opening your eyes. It's that easy. Not too long ago on the internet, I tuned into a site and it said, how'd you like to see what's going on in Waikiki Beach right now? It was so cold and rainy where I was. And I thought, wow, that'd be great. So I tuned into the site and clicked on the little icon for the camera and like magic. There it was, a video camera set up out on the beach. It was panning back and forth. There were people sunbathing. There were people swimming in the water, building sand castles, having a great time walking up and down the beach, holding hands. And I thought, wow, what a miracle. And let's go back again to that native Aboriginal tribesman in Australia. And if we ask him, you know, which one of these is a miracle that you sit down and close your eyes and you can see what's going on over in the next hill? Or I have this little box and we don't have to close our eyes. We just click on this little thing and everyone here in the tribe could see a picture from a beach 5,000 miles away. Of course, he'd say, well, the box, that's the miracle. So he's learned to do in his everyday way of being in the world what we're learning here. And the more I remote view, the more I realize, yeah, the box is a miracle. Because it is a miracle to be able to take objects, things from the material world, and put them together in such a way that they replicate, that they impersonate our own innate abilities. That's the miracle for me. So let's talk about you using your own innate hardwired abilities. When you're going to remote view, you just imagine, just create a place. If you were looking at Bob's house, well, you know about what a house looks like. You make the outline and then you let your intuition fill in the details. You see, that kind of sensing is not limited by time and space. You remember Jose talked about the two kinds of senses, our original senses, which are our intuitive senses, our mental and spiritual senses, and this other set of senses that are physical senses. Now, those are the ones that are limited. Those are the ones that are limited to physics or physical input. They're limited to what light hits the eye, what molecules go up the nose, what temperature or texture touches the end of our fingers. And so those senses are limited to how far a vibration can travel in the air and then impress itself on our eardrum. Let's talk about a set of senses that is not limited that is not limited by even space and time. Let's talk about a set of senses that can see way beyond today and way beyond yesterday. Time belongs to the outer consciousness level. It belongs to the left hemisphere. Out here we have a linear sense of time. One hour can only happen in one hour. And when that hand goes all the way around, 
one hour will have passed, and that's it. Well, that's true out here. You are learning your way around in a dimension, in a state of mind or way of being, in which those things aren't so concrete, where time is malleable. You can go back and look at what happened yesterday. Suppose you're trying to help a child who's very upset. You can go back and look at them going back a week at a time until that upset stops. And then you can concentrate in that area and see what happened. Then you can help that child. It's so simple. It's like walking into a store and wanting to see what happened at the counter. Well, what do you do? You just hit the rewind button on their video cameras and you can see what happened. Again, that's the miracle, just taking things and objects and impersonating what you can do naturally. That seems like the hard way. So as you use these techniques and learn to do more and more remote viewing, make it a game. Use your workbook. There'll be a section in there for successes. And under remote viewing, make it a game. If you're going to go to some place tomorrow, then go into this alpha level, do your relaxation, and picture what is that place going to look like? What colors will be on the walls? And then when you get there the next day, remember what it looks like and come home and compare your notes because that's how you make corrections. You say, oh, I got the color right. Or the next time, oh, I got the shape of the room right. Oh, well, the desk was over there. So I saw the desk over here. Okay, so next time I'll be a little more careful and look at it a little more closely. And that way you can get feedback about where your successes are. And you can enhance your abilities. One of the ways I use remote viewing is in a very nice hobby that I have, goal prospecting. Being a Silva grad, it occurred to me that I needed to get some points of reference for gold. So I ordered some little pieces of gold through the mail, and I taped them to a little white card and went outside and spread out a big tarp, 10 feet by 15 feet. And my helper there was instructed to wait until I walked around the corner of the building and then put the pieces of gold at various points underneath the tarp and then cover the tarp back up and then tell me to come on over now they were ready. So when I would walk around the corner, I would close my eyes and remote view that tarp and where the pieces of gold were, tuning into it and would come out there and I had four rocks and I would put a rock on top of the tarp where I had viewed where the gold was. Well, at first I got two. Then I consistently could get three and then I could consistently get four and the rock would be within six or eight inches of where that piece of gold was. So now I'm out in the gold fields and there's an old prospector there who sort of like me and was showing me how to prospect. And he says, now in this stream, we want to go on this inside edge. And I said, you know, I think the gold is over there. And he said, no, that, no, no, that's all wrong. It, it goes on the inside edge. If you want me to teach you, then follow what I say. So we dug up this area, ran it through the machine, then panned it. There wasn't very much gold there at all. And he says, you want to try your little hot spot over there? And I went over there and out of a five gallon bucket in this one little spot, we got more gold than we'd got out of two pickup loads of dirt that we had processed during the day. So you can remote view by learning and getting the frequency of what you're looking for. So often I walk into a store and I remote view the store on the way in and say, where is what I need? Because, you know, in these grocery stores, they like changing the things around. So you walk every aisle and I go right to it. When I lose a tool, when I'm working out on the ranch, I say, where's the tool? And I'll raise up and my attention will be 
drawn to a certain place. And I'll go over there and there's their tool. So this remote viewing is like a whole other set of senses. Use it like it was a set of senses. Use it in a nonchalant way because they're your senses. Now, it's very important and very helpful to do the theta section of this recording three times a week. Even after you finish the course, even after you're successful. I've been doing this since 1971, and I listen to theta three times a week. Now, why would I do that? Well, Jose taught us that our brain waves normally in a waking state operate between 14 and 21. By lowering our brain waves, usually people who are wired the same as you and haven't had this training go to sleep at around 12. And they dream at 10. And they're asleep. A silver grad, after a little practice from this program that you're listening to, will be able to do math solve problems, very intricate thinking and planning where most people are simply unconscious and asleep. So by using theta, that means that will become your new point of lowering your brain waves where beyond that you would go to sleep. And by functioning three times a week with consciousness, now that's not going to sleep, that's sitting in a chair, at theta, And listening to that part of the recording three times a week, that becomes your new baseline. That means you're conscious way, way down there in theta. That means during the day, your brain waves that function in a seven-cycle kingdom will be going between six, down there where theta is, all the way up to 13. And again, that centers us at 10. So that's that line that Jose drew across the table with the water is that 10. And by going down to theta three times a week, you can center right over that line. That way you can see what's going on in the physical, be aware of all of that, report it back to the spiritual and the mental, and get help about what you should do to get guidance without having to do anything. It will just pop up on its own. And that's always so nice when the information just comes to us. Now, one of the most important things about this visualization enhancement drill that we're going to give you next is that this is a bridging drill between the conscious mind the alpha brainwave, which is now conscious because you've learned how to stretch your cognitive functionings down to about 10 cycles of brainwave activity and still keep the chunking up abilities there. And now you're learning how to chunk down into what we call theta brainwave, which is at seven cycles of brainwave activity. And this is the frequency that has been proven time and time again to be the frequency of remote viewing and the frequency of energy healing, which is basically 7.1 to 7.3 on the Schumann resonance factor. Now, when you do the bridging without doing theta, that means that you could go down there, but what would happen at theta, at seven cycles of brainwave activity, when you came back up, you wouldn't remember anything that happened. So now your consciousness, the bridge, alpha, goes to theta. You're aware of what's going on at theta. You come back up and you can use it at alpha and you can use it at beta. So it's very, very important. Now, what Jose Silva did is when he built in the remote viewing drills, he built them in with something that's very, very familiar to everybody and something that most people have good feelings about. So there are attractor fields in there that help and enhance the visualization skills. He would use the house, something everybody has, and he would start you with things you're familiar with. He would start you with the outside of the house. And then when you learned how to do the remote viewing of the house, you scanned in the pattern that your brain had already been trained in, which is scanning left to right, top to bottom, just like we read the page of a book. So it's nothing new. It's nothing different. It's just a different use of an old skill you already have done again at alpha down to theta and new dimensions of the mind that most people don't have communication skills on. 
So that's basically what he was doing there. He would have you scan the outside of the house. He would then have you go into the living room. You have good feelings about the living room. And then he would have you facing the south wall. Now, the south wall is very, very important because Jose Silva found out when he was training psychics that they all performed much, much, much better when they're facing the south wall. For some reasons, the frequencies of the earth would align better with the frequencies of the energy body and of the mind when they're facing the south wall. So make sure, at least in your imagination, you put the south wall of your house there mentally so it does work good for you. Now, he's also doing something else here is He's teaching everybody to pay attention to details. This is a cognitive skill called chunking down. This is a skill of genius. In other words, to take something that you already know and to do something new, different, and better with it takes a skill called chunking down. So pay attention. Pay attention to the roof chunking down. Pay attention to the wall scanning left to right and focus in on whatever your attention is drawn to you. This is, again, a chunking skill, but now he's using unconscious hookups to the conscious mind, whatever your attention is drawn to. And at this level, your cognitive mind, the thinking part of you, the personality part, will now start focusing on the details you've been programming for, and he's building it into this remote viewing visualization enhancement drill. And so focus on anything that attracts you. Now, this is one of those skills that you go, well, where could I ever use this skill? Actually, a remote viewing skill can be used for about every problem you have, and we're going to have other sessions on how to use it with health and how to use it with relationships and things of this nature. But just again, I was driving back from a seminar I gave in Sacramento, California, and I'm about halfway back to Medford, Oregon, and all of a sudden I noticed the oil pressure gauge on my vehicle dropped to zero which means big trouble if you're going to have to have a motor repaired. So I pulled over to the side, and I'm not a mechanic. I had no clue what to do. So it's about 11 p.m. at night, and I phoned up AAA, and they said, well, we can't have a man there until tomorrow morning. And I said, okay. So I drove to the closest motel, parked my vehicle, went in, went to sleep. And when I'm sleeping, I had this dream that I saw this little sensor that had a plug unclipped from it. And I went, wow, what's that? And goes, it's oil sensing unit. And I went, that is so cool. And so the next morning, the AAA man comes out and I said, I wonder if it could be an oil sensor unit. Maybe it became unplugged. And he went under the front of the vehicle. And when he went under the front, I went, wait a minute, it's in the back of the vehicle. It's not in the front. And he goes, nope, this one's plugged in. And I said, well, maybe there's one in the back. And he goes, nah, this car doesn't have one in the back. I said, could you look? So he crawled under the back of the vehicle and he goes, my gosh, There is one back here, and it's unplugged, and he plugged it back in. We started up the car. It had oil pressure. wasn't a doggone thing wrong with it. I got in my car and drove home. So remote viewing can help you. I remote view where I can find the gold first. I love the Illinois River back there in Medford area, Southern Oregon. They have a lot of gold deposits back there, and it's nice to go out and find gold every time you go out. Before I'd go out, i try to find gold, and all I got was sore knees. It's sort of neat because when Dennis was talking about finding the gold with the gold prospector, I just sort of tuned into what he was doing, and I saw a meander here, and I saw it too shallow, so it wouldn't drop off the water there in the gold. But right out here, I saw a ledge with a dip and a whole bunch of gravel right behind it. And that's what I saw, and I saw the gold going down into that. Now, there's a point here to be brought up. With remote viewing, we are stressing the visual senses because that's how Jose Silva did it, and he's very, very successful at doing it. We also have auditory senses, and we have kinesthetic senses. Like when Dennis said, and I felt drawn to the location of the tool I was trying to find. That's a kinesthetic awareness sense. That is also a form of remote viewing, and it works just as good as the visual, and different people will find different senses to use. And so when you're doing a remote viewing drill, you might want to just tie in, well, what do I smell when I get a hit visually? What do I feel when I get a hit visually? What do I touch Is it rough? Is it harsh? Does it smell good? Does it smell bad? What do I hear if I would reach up and objectively scratch it with a hand? So you can bring in all of the senses. Do I feel good emotionally? Do I feel bad? Does it draw me to it? Does it push me away from it? This type of thing. We had a thing last night. I needed to get some vitamins, you know, because I left my vitamins at home for this trip. And I came here and I go to the cab driver and I'm with Dennis. And I said, 
I want to go to Walgreens. I want to get some vitamins. Well, he took us to Walmart. And, well, I went into Walmart because he took us there. I go in there and I go crazy. I don't know if fluorescent lights or what. And I noticed that every line had like 50 people there. And I'm going, I'm not going to wait here. And I said, could you take me to Walgreens? So we go to Walgreens. I go in there. By the way, he said, yeah, I knew it felt bad when we stopped here. Okay, well, I felt bad too, but I didn't want to make waves with the poor cab driver. So we went right to Walgreens, went in, got it, came back out. I mean, it took three minutes for the whole thing. Go with the feelings because if you're hooked into the remote viewing, into the tuning, it does work all the time. But again, work on the kinesthetics also. I was doing a research paper. I was looking for a book that was on some psychic developmental skills done back in 1882, and it was taught by Tibetan monks to the people in the Theosophy Society. And I couldn't find anything about it. I couldn't find what I wanted on the web, on the internet, none of that stuff there. So I did a program in remote viewing, and I left it with the third scene that I found the product. Okay? And I also found another book on the web that I wanted, and it was at a bookstore in Portland, Oregon called Northwestern Bookstores. So I go into Northwestern Bookstores. I pick up the other book. It's a $6 book. Couldn't find it in any place in Medford. But as I'm going out of the door, I get this feeling. I go, where's your metaphysical section? And he points, and I went right over there, reached down. I grabbed this book. I picked it up, and it has every experiment ever done by the Miniature Institute out of Topeka, Kansas, by Dr. Elmer Green on that psychic exercise and drill done by the Tibetan monks in 1882. I mean, it was awesome. So my point is, is remote viewing works a lot of different ways, but you have to have the alpha developed. You have to have the theta developed. You must be able to tune into those feelings, into those thoughts. I get a lot of auditories. I get things that come in. I like a voice is speaking to them every once in a while. Sometimes I get drawn to it, like I was drawn to that special report in the bookstore. Sometimes I get a visual. So it depends. It really depends. There is one thing that's brought up a lot of times by clients, and when they first see that you can do it, they say, well, yeah, you can do it, but I can't do it. And we found out that in every case, if they do the drills and do health cases, at least 10 health cases with people they're concerned about, they will learn how to do it because they will get verifiable feedback. A health case is when someone gives you... um Somebody's sick in their presence. They might have a problem with their heart. They might have an upset stomach. They might have just been in a car accident, something along this, but they don't give you any details about what is wrong with them or what is right with them. The first health case I ever got, when I visualized them, I scanned this person left to right, top to bottom, just like we're doing right here. And I went through and I go, oh, she's got a great attitude. She's skinny. I said, but all of her knuckles are really bony. And in every one of her joints, she has all this white stuff. Well, that's what she had. She had arthritis of her hands and she could hardly move them. So my job at that time was to take all that white stuff out mentally, doing another technique we're going to be learning shortly, which is called remote influence. Okay. Instead of remote viewing, but you'll notice that all these tools that we're giving you in the Silva Ultramind Systems course are tied together. One links into another, links into another. So you got to be able to do remote viewing to make sure that the remote influence is right. It's very easy to do, even though the remote influence is much easier to do than the remote viewing. So let's say that you're doing a health case and they give you the name, they give you the address and they give you the location where the person lives, but they don't tell you anything about him. And then you do a casework on it and they write it down as you do it and then they confirm for you. And so then when you're still at level, they go back and they verify what all your hits were. So your mind is now focusing in on all the hits instead of all the misses. Some people will go back and they go, oh, you screwed that one up. No, no, you didn't mess that one up. What you did is you weren't calibrating right. You were on the wrong frequency. You might have picked up somebody else. You might have been using your imagination. But you want to use your imagination to tune into what that person is. And you only get that through practice. And so we recommend, you know, at least 10 health cases. The reason we recommend health cases is because when you work on the living organism and you care about them, then the desire is there. You want to help them. The expectancy is there because you've got the skill and the belief is there because you've seen other people do it. So now it will work. Now it'll tune in. But again, it takes you doing the drill and do it with something minor. Do it with someone that has a headache. When we were working out last night, 
I did as a casework, something that's very, very loving to me and that I care a lot about. And I, I noticed something in this person's field that I hadn't noticed before because they're such a part of my life that I didn't think about them as working a case on them. So I worked a case on her last night just to help her out a lot. And so that's what you do is you make sure you do the drills and health cases is the easiest thing to work on. Now, you'll also start remembering, you'll get a feeling and you'll start remembering the feelings that you have. And then all you do is remember the feeling when you do the health case and review a feeling before you go back to do another health case and then review the feeling before you go back and do any type of remote viewing. And the feeling will attach you to the right frequency to work into that new thing that you're remote viewing. One way to make sure that you learn how to do these correctly is learn how to just trust your feelings. A good way to do that is go ahead and use the workbook that you're getting along with this and go back in there and record all your successes. And then before you go back and do another case work, another remote viewing work, go over all your successes from the workbook and then just tune in to the feelings that you had at that and then go to level keeping those in mind as you go there and that will make sure you're going to the right brain hemisphere with your remote viewing but have the conscious control from the left brain hemisphere so it's all working together to get you the remote viewing skills so make sure you use that workbook now get ready for your next drill the visualization enhancement drill This is the Visualization Enhancement Mental Training Exercise of Jose Silva's Ultramind System. I'm John LaTourette, and I'll be your guide. In the background, you will hear the gentle tapping of the theta sound, a natural sound that will help your brain adjust to lower frequencies. This recording is to be used with eyes closed, so do not play it when you are driving or performing any other activity that requires the use of your eyesight. Remember that if, at any time, you feel uncomfortable... Readjust your position to make yourself more comfortable. If you feel you must open your eyes for any reason, then open your eyes and make yourself comfortable. If you open your eyes, then go back to the beginning of the recording and start over. Anytime you desire to relax, mentally or verbally repeat the word, relax, and you will relax physically and mentally. This mind training exercise is adapted from one originally copyrighted by Jose Silva of Laredo, Texas in 1969, after 25 years of research. New material on this recording is copyrighted in the year 2003 by Silva Ultramind Systems. Reproduction for redistribution is strictly prohibited. Now prepare for the visualization enhancement exercise by finding a comfortable position. We will start this exercise with the three to one method. Find a comfortable position, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, Mentally repeat and visualize number three, three times. To help you learn to relax physically at level three, I'm going to direct your attention to different parts of your body. Relax your scalp. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your face. Relax your throat. Relax your shoulders. Relax your chest externally and internally. Relax your abdominal area externally and internally. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your feet. You are now at a deeper healthier level of mind, deeper than before. This is your physical relaxation level three. Whenever you mentally repeat and visualize the number three, your body will relax as completely as you are now and more so every time you practice. To enter mental relaxation level two, take a deep breath 
and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number two three times, and you are at level two. Level two is for mental relaxation, where noises will not distract you. Instead, noises will help you to relax mentally more and more. To improve mental relaxation at level two, practice visualizing tranquil and passive scenes. To go to your center, take a deep breath, and while exhaling, mentally repeat and visualize the number one three times. You are now at level one, a deeper, healthier level of mind where you can function from your center. To help you enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, I am going to count from ten to one. On each descending number, you will feel yourself going deeper and you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind. Ten, nine, feel going deeper. Eight, seven, six, deeper and deeper. Five, four, three, deeper and deeper. Two, one, you are now at a deeper, healthier level of mind, deeper than before. It is a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. Laws of Programming The following laws are to be considered when programming. Do to others only what you like others to do to you. The solution must help to make this planet a better place to live. The solution must be the best for everybody concerned. The solution must help at least two or more persons. The solution must be within the possibility area. Principles to keep in mind when programming. The following principles apply to programming. Objective physical communication takes place at the beta left brain dimension using the objective physical senses. The hearing is used for perception, and the voice is used for transmission. Subjective spiritual communication takes place at the alpha right brain dimension by using the spiritual senses. Visualization is used for perception, and imagination is used for transmission. In the objective physical dimension, the past is behind us, the present is our present position, and the future is ahead of us. In the subjective spiritual dimension, the past is to your right, the present is centered straight ahead, and the future is to your left. We will now program effective sensory projection for your success. We will program information through the use of mental projection. We will establish subjective points of reference at the imaginative dimension, the subjective dimension, at different levels and depths as you project yourself mentally to your home in order to improve your ability to recall and visualize its appearance. In a moment, I am going to count from one to three and cause a sound with my fingers. At that time, you will imagine yourself to be standing about 30 feet in front of your home. You will study the outer appearance of your home, scanning the scene. You will start at the top left of the scene and go from left to right just as you do when reading a page of a book. You will then go to the left side of the scene again, but a little lower than before, and again go from left to right. You will continue going a little lower each time until you reach the ground level. I will now count from one to three and cause a sound with my fingers so that you may imagine projecting yourself to the front of your home. One, two, three. Project yourself mentally to the front of your home, standing about 30 feet from it. Begin scanning the scene at the upper left-hand corner, going slowly from left to right, lower each time until you reach the ground level. You will go slowly and stop to study anything that attracts your intelligence while scanning, such as the roof, windows, window frames, doors. Study anything that attracts you. Begin by studying the roof of your home. What material is it made of? What color is it? 
Continue studying everything that attracts you until you reach the ground level. Concentrate on colors. Take your time. Study colors. Study the colors. Take your time. Study the colors. Scan the ground level. Now, focus your attention on the front door and concentrate on the doorknob or handle. Mentally move close to the door, close enough to touch the door handle. Expect the door to appear to increase in size as you get closer. Mentally touch the doorknob or handle, open the door, Mentally enter your home, closing the door behind you. Mentally walk towards your living room. Once you've entered your living room, stand at the center, facing the south wall. You have been here before. You have been here during daylight hours. You have been here during night time with the lights turned on and the lights turned off. I am now going to count from one to three. At the count of three, it will be daytime. One, two, three. It is now daytime. You are standing at the center of your living room facing the south wall. You have been here before. You know how much light enters this room during the day and you recognize what it is in front of you. What is behind you? You know what is to your left and what is to your right. At the count of three, we will change the scene to nighttime with the house lights turned on. One, two, three. The scene has changed to nighttime, and you are still standing in the middle of the living room facing the south wall. You have been here before, and you know what is in front of you. What is behind you? What is to your left? And what is to your right? At the count of three, the lights will go out. One, two, three. The lights are out and you are standing in darkness facing the south wall. Although the living room looks dark, you still know what is in front of you. What is behind you? What is to your left? And what is to your right? At this time, concentrate on the wall before you, the south wall. You can sense it being a certain distance away, and you know what is on this wall. You also know the color of this wall. Use your memory, your knowing, your sensing to make a study of your south wall. Scan this wall as you did the front of your home, beginning at the upper left-hand corner and going from left to right, a little lower each time until you reach the floor level. Study everything that attracts you, pictures, curtains, and furniture. Especially concentrate on objects that contain color. Take your time.
study the colors. Study the colors. Take your time. Whenever you desire to improve your visualization, recall previous impressions of something that you have seen or imagined. To further improve your ability to visualize and imagine, you can modify and change the images in any way you desire, employing changes in color, characters, situations, structures, and in results. Whatever you perceive with your imagination at this dimension, you can use as points of reference in the future. It is now an accomplished fact that subjective points of reference have been established at the imaginative dimension, at the subjective dimension, at different levels and different depths. To function at these levels and to use these points of reference, all you need is to have a sincere desire to solve problems. Your mind will automatically seek out these points of reference where you will perceive and become aware of information you can use to solve such problems. And this is so. You have practiced entering deep, healthy levels of mind. In your next session, you will enter a deeper, healthier level of mind, faster and easier than this time. Every time you function at these levels of the mind and at these points of reference, you will receive beneficial effects physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help yourself physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help yourself, your loved ones, physically and mentally. You may use these levels of the mind and these points of reference to help any human being who needs help, physically and mentally. You will never use these levels of the mind or these points of reference to harm any human being. If this be your intention, you will not be able to function within these levels of the mind, nor will you be able to use these points of reference. You will always use these levels of the mind and these points of reference in a constructive, creative manner for all that is good, honest, pure, clean, and positive, and this is so. You will continue to strive to take part in constructive and creative activities to make this a better world to live in, so that when we move on, we shall have left behind a better world for those who follow. You will consider the whole of humanity, depending on their ages, as fathers or mothers, brothers or sisters, sons or daughters. You are a superior human being. You have greater understanding, compassion, and patience with others. In a moment, I am going to count from one to five. At that moment, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before. You'll have no ill effects whatsoever in your head, no headache, no ill effects whatsoever in your hearing, no buzzing in your ears, no ill effects whatsoever in your vision and eyesight. Vision, eyesight, and hearing improve every time you function at these levels of your mind. One, two, coming out slowly now. Three, at the count of five, you will open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before, feeling the way you feel when you have slept the right amount of revitalizing, refreshing, relaxing, healthy sleep. Four, five, eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine, and in perfect health, feeling better than before. This next technique is so powerful when used in business that we'll begin by asking you, we'll begin by begging you, please use this technique with all fairness 
and in the most ethical way that you can. Make sure that you intuitively suggest to others what is best for all concerned, what is fair and what is balanced. So in business, you begin by remote viewing the situation. Now, this is business that you're about to do. I remote view my customers before I actually physically contact them. And I ask myself these questions. What is something other than business that this business that we're going to do that they need? Do they need some health work? Do they need a more positive attitude, resolve some grief or resentment? And that way I'm giving first before I get there. I'm giving first before I remotely influence. And it also helps me to tune in to my customer to really get the exact frequency to meet the customer where they live. And that way, when I do meet them, we'll have that instant rapport. We'll be like old friends. So I always do something for them first, health-wise, or something in their life. And then I ask myself in remote view, what are their business needs? What are their needs? What do they need out of this? What's in it for them? How's it going to help them? What are they looking for? When you show up to talk about any product, you could talk all day. You could talk for weeks. If you remote view ahead of time, you find out exactly what their needs are, and then you're talking to them about their needs. Then you look at what are their biggest concerns? What are they concerned about? Maybe they have a few fears. Maybe they have concerns about doing business with you or your company. Or maybe they've done business with someone in the past and weren't treated properly. So instead of having to overcome, argue, deal with, or struggle with this, ahead of time you can find out what their biggest concerns are about doing business and release those. Let those go. Then you want to find out what their major points of interest of doing business with you and getting your product, find out what are they interested in? What interests them about your product? And you build on that. Now, about the buying, here's where we start to remotely influence. And notice all these questions up to now have been about them and their needs, them and what they need. Doing business is like a wood stove. You put the wood in, you warm it up, it'll warm you up. So all these questions have been about what they want. How can I help them get what they want through the use of my product, through doing business with me? And I have tuned myself to their needs so that now when I begin influencing, I can do some real work. I can meet them down at a deep level, and they'll have some trust for me because I've been there to help them. So... If you're trying to get them to buy, then most people would say, what are their obstacles? Well, I don't like to use that word. I like to say details. What are the details that I haven't taken care of yet? And you can find out exactly what could hold up the deal before you even get there. And you cover that in your presentation or in structuring the deal. You cover that ahead of time so you don't get down to the end and it's argumentative. It can actually be a selling point for you. So you're moving so many things over from the adversarial, argumentative way of doing business over into a more organic, both-and partnership way of being in the world and doing business. And then at a deep level, you assure them how your product, how doing business with your company is going to fulfill those needs. It's going to help them get what they want. And then... You see the end. You see them having bought the product and you see them very happy and enthusiastic about it, doing more business with you and recommending you to more and more people. So let's review this a little bit. We tune into them. We're not thinking about our needs just yet. We tune into them. What do they need before I do business with them? What can I do to help them? And then What can I do to alleviate their fears? 
What are their fears? What are any possible details that I need to cover ahead of time before I go talk to them? That way we're partners. We're not adversarial. We're partners doing business together. Now, when you're buying things, wow, this is so very important. When next time you go out to buy something or think of some major purchase you've made, a home or a car, wouldn't you have liked to have known ahead of time what their lowest price was? Wouldn't you have liked to have been able to influence them and say, you know, let's come down to this price. This is a fair price. This is what I can pay. Look at all the money you would have saved had you known exactly the price that they would come down to. Not too long ago, my mom was buying a home, and we remote viewed and influenced the salesperson before we got there. So in the middle of negotiations, we had come upon a figure. She asked me to get the figure, so I got the figure. And in the middle of negotiations, it became obvious that my figure was correct. Even though they were asking for 25% more on the price, When we finally finished the paperwork and everything, the price was 240 something dollars different than what I remote viewed. Again, that saved us about three or four thousand dollars in buying. So when you're buying, you can also influence people to sell to you and to sell to you then and sell to you at a good price. You can remotely sense the product. You can check it out, take it for an intuitive test drive. You can actually visualize yourself using the product down the road and how it'll benefit you. Thomas Edison was at a dinner one night and he jumped as if he was startled. And they asked him what happened. He says, oh, the last bearing just broke. They said, what are you talking about? And he said, I have to build a giant bearing for a power plant to make electricity. And no one has ever built a bearing this big. And I had three designs. So I went deep into my mind. And of course, Thomas Edison trained himself to sleep without losing consciousness by holding an iron ball. So I went deep into my mind and I built the three bearings in my mind and I started them moving. And I looked over there to the calendar and I sped up the calendar so that one day equals one year and the last bearing went out and it's been 15 days so that's the bearing i'm going to build and that bearing eventually after he built it, he put it in there it lasted 15 years and went out so you can test drive your products you can see yourself down the road and you set it up the picture okay i'm using it and see what your intuition impresses on it You can use remote influence when you're interviewing for a job. My mom is 78 years old. And she can get a job in two or three days. Because before she goes for the interview, she remote views the building, finds out who's going to do the interview. She loves to get a name. If she can't, she remote views the building, finds out who's going to do the interview and then influences them ahead of time. She talks to them. She finds out, what are you looking for in an employee? What do you like? What do you not like? And she talks to them and tells them how much she cares about the company and how well she's going to perform and how well she'll get along with everyone else and how proud everyone will be that they hired the 78-year-old woman. And when she shows up, she said it goes just like the script. And at the end of the interview, they tend to use some of the words as they're hiring her that she had programmed in with her remote influence. You can use remote influence when you're borrowing money. The banker is hired to protect the bank's money and have full confidence that you'll pay this money back. So you can remotely talk to the banker before you get there and tell him what your intentions are and share with him on a deep level of mind. You see, most people in business depend on a form of communication that's verbal or written. It goes through the physical senses. 
People deal with it with the left hemisphere. And you have another avenue, another line of communication. You've got that hotline right to where they live, down deep where they feel. They'll do business with you. I've had people say, I'm doing business with you. I don't really know why, but it seems like you're the guy to do business with. You can also do a little thing that we have learned in Silva Ultramind. Assume someone's feelings and thoughts and emotions. It's like walking up and stepping inside them and see how it feels in there. It's a great way to build empathy, and it's a great way to find out what someone is thinking. And we picture the person in front of us, and then it's like you reach out and put on their head like it was a mask, And you see how they're feeling. What are they thinking? What are they saying? What do they think about you? What do they think about your project? And in this way, you can know their deepest thoughts. Again, remember the caution at the beginning. These techniques are very powerful. They're very effective. They work so well that for a time, you might be able to use them as an unfair advantage. And you know that won't hold up and it doesn't work. So be sure that you're being completely ethical when you use these remote influencing techniques. And then you can remotely inspire someone to take action. We've all been doing business and can't get that person to take action. So you remotely view them and you look for, again, what most people call obstacles You look for the details that just haven't been covered and see if there are any details that have been left out that they need to know and tell them what the details are. And then, again, you assume their emotions and their thoughts, like putting on a mask, and you find out where are the sticking points with them. What is keeping them from acting? It could be a fear, which you can alleviate by telling them the truth. It could be that they've been burned in the past and maybe something is reminding them of an old feeling. You can alleviate that and correct that and say that was then, this is now. You can have a heart-to-heart talk with them and tell them how much you want to help them and make sure you're telling the truth. Because at that level, you see, you're being intuitive. They're also intuitive. And if you approach someone on an intuitive level, and try to remotely influence them, they'll know very quickly if your heart's in the right place because you're going to the part where they know if you're telling the truth. They've got their own built-in lie detector. So make sure that you're telling the truth when you're remotely influencing. Then you find out what would be their motivation for moving ahead with this. What would really spur them into action? What would make them want to Go ahead with this deal. And you talk to them about that. And then again, you see the deal completed. And you see them feeling so happy. You send over some happiness. You send over some contentment. You send over some satisfaction, some relaxation. You send over some joy about this is so successful. I'm so happy. You send over all these images, all these feelings all these emotions ahead of time before you ever walk in the door. It's like paving the way. Now, there's another technique that Jose invented called the mold. And if you're doing business, say your business is on the telephone. Then you make a mold of yourself on the phone and the other person on the end of that wire on the other phone. Now on the other phone, where that mold is, you make that a mold that will take a man, a woman, child, large, small, any age, and you fill these two molds with white light, with peace, happiness, contentment, with joy, with good health, a sense of well-being, high self-esteem, so that whenever you're on the phone with someone, 
they feel this mold. They step into this mold. When they pick up the receiver, when they hit the speaker button, they just entered this mold. And they're feeling great. They never felt so good. My mom is a real fireball. 78 years old, wears tennis shoes, and got the finest red hair that money can buy. She uses this in her work. She does interviews with the top executives in the high-tech field in the nation. IBM, Intel, Microsoft, she's there. And her job is to keep a busy executive on the phone for 20 minutes to do a survey about their high-tech usage and what their high-tech plans are. And she uses the uni mold because she said, as long as they're in that mold, they're feeling good. They don't want to get out of it. She holds the record for keeping one of the biggest CEOs in the country on the line for 42 minutes. Now, I told this to a friend of mine at lunch one day, and she says, I have to talk to Ruby. And I said, why? Do you do business like that? She says, no, my dad is a big CEO of a major corporation, and I can only get five minutes. So Ruby helped her, and now she gets all the time she wants from her dad. So you can use this mold when you're doing business. Make a mold of you and everyone that you do business with during the day and fill it with white light. Now, first, they're going to feel better. Second of all, every time you're doing some business, every time you're interacting with a boss, fellow employee, receptionist, personal assistant, a shipper, a customer, they're going to be in that mold. And guess who else is going to be in that mold? You are. You're going to feel great. At the end of the day, you don't have to drag out of there and try to go and recuperate. You're going to feel great. You're going to feel charged up. You're going to feel full of energy, white light, health, life. So every time you're doing business, you'll feel better. How many people destroy their health while they do business? They have to go and recreate themselves in a vacation. They're taking antacids. The stress just tears them up. This is a way of doing business that will build you up, that will make you healthier, that will make you happier. And when you walk out of your business at the end of the day, you're charged up and ready to go. When it's Monday morning, you can't wait to get there, to get those good feelings, to feel what people really feel, to make those good connections at a distance. To have that influence. This is the way to do business. Doing business ethically, morally, and having those line of communications down deep. This is business from the inside out. This is the remote viewing exercise I'm going to be talking about right now. I actually call it something a little bit different because there's so many neat things in this drill that most people aren't aware of, but if they just do the drill the way it is, they'll still get all the secrets. But I call it the secret teachings, the method that turns you into a mind master. And I do it because of all the neat things that's put into this drill that most people don't know about it. Now, what happened is originally, like when I first took these courses, I was one of those guys that I just didn't see pictures. And I learned that by doing these drills, that I just wasn't paying enough attention. I needed to pay more attention to what my actual thought processes were because my eyes went the right place and I could describe exactly whatever I didn't see. Whether it was my bedroom or my house, I still knew where the bed was. I knew the color of the bedspread, but it just didn't make much sense to me. So I learned how to see pictures. And I learned how to get lots of information from seeing those pictures. And what I didn't realize is that most people see pictures. They don't see them slow. It's not a drawn out thing. As they see pictures and snaps, it goes, bam, you get the whole picture. And it might be beyond your conscious awareness. Now, by learning how to do the alpha training and going down with the Silva Ultramind systems, going down to level, again, remember, that's the bridge between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. So, 
before I took the Silva Ultramind Systems training, that was so quick I had no awareness of it. doesn't mean it was there. It just means I wasn't there. So by learning how to do and see these pictures and do and see the colors. And so Jose put a lot of stuff there. He put colors and then he put how to switch scenes. And Okay, scene one. Switch it to scene two, switch it to scene three, switch it to scene four. All very important concepts. So most people in their systems of visualization or mental enhancement, they just have you work on one process. Well, he put a method in here. You can work on 50 if you want to, and every one of them is going to be clean cut. They're going to be just like that whole meditation was designed for the one drill, even though you're doing 50, because your mind now has segment that is nice and clean between all of them. He also put movement in there. And you're controlling the movement. Okay, he took into the bedroom. You don't like the color of the bed? Good, change the color. You don't like the position of the bed? You change that. If something there you don't like, you change it. So it's all for problem solving. And again, the problem solving is under your control. And after a while, just switching the pictures become an automatic process. And then in the real world, you carry out those other things done the way that you want them to be done. Now, what does that mean? Well, The process of switching is another thing called specifics on segment intending. In other words, when people know what they want, they really don't have any trouble getting it. But when they're wishy-washy about what they want, then they have trouble getting it. So he's training you to see clearly what you do want versus what you don't want. Then he's giving you a method to get it. Now, the brain works really, really quick. When you're doing hypnosis training, they'll have you see an image. Bam, it's like that. They'll have another one. Bam, it's like that. And the thing is, is most people have lazy brains. Their brains aren't working that way. So when he actually teaches you how to do the conditioning cycle, he takes you through simple things you already know how to do. He takes you through, say, your living room. Then he has you visualize a color that you know, which is the color of the living room. And then he'll give you a conditioning cycle that actually teaches you clean breaks between different scenes. He says, I'm going to count from one to three. And on the count of three, you will now visualize the room black. One, two, three. And the color is black. It's that quick. And then he says, okay, now we're going to change the color to red. One, two, three. Bam, it's red. And so your mind is learning how to switch from one color to another color to another color all the way through. And he gives you a little bit of time all the way through it. So now it's going to change to green. One, two, three. Changes to green. Going to change to blue. One, two, three changes to blue. Now, on the way back after it changes to violet, he goes really quick through there because it's already learned how to do it. He's going backwards. He's retraining it backwards. So it's going to be bam, 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 bam. So it's going to be violet, blue, green, red, black, normal color of the room. And so it works that quick. And then what he did is he took you into the bedroom and showed you how to see the bedroom and start changing things in the bedroom. You see the color, you see the bed, you change the locations. You can change the colors. So now what do you do is you use this for business. You take these skills that you've learned, this entrainment of segment intending that you've learned. That's the secret teaching here is that trainment of segment intending. I was at a conference that I was giving with a bunch of other world-class trainers in Cancun. And I didn't know these trainers before, but every one of these trainers had some really good skills I wanted to learn, and I wanted to learn them from them directly or from people they were associated with. So what I did is that night I went to bed, and I went to my center, and then I said, one, two, three, I'm going to have Mr. John Laval on my screen. And I snapped my fingers, and John's there, and I talked to Mr. Laval about what I wanted to get done with him, and then I saw the three scenes technique. This is where I am now. This is a process of me getting what I want, and this is a process of me ending up what I wanted. Well, when I got the final third picture with John Laval, I got this, but it still needed to lead me further. And it had to lead me to another event that happened a year later, so then I programmed on that. I said, one, two, three, he disappears from my screen. And I went, one, two, three, he's now on my screen one year later at the seminar in Orlando, Florida. One, two, three, he's on there. And I did the next process, and I worked the three scenes technique, boom, And then I went back to another project because Rex Sykes was there at the same seminar in Cancun. And I'm still in Cancun. I'm doing time travel. I'm doing all these steps in advance in my mind. And Sykes had some really good, he's a good NLP trainer. 
and he had some really good material I wanted, and I didn't want to fork out the bucks, but I have a lot of good materials too. So in my mind, I programmed to, you know, trade my materials for his materials. You know, scene one, I don't have his materials, but I got my materials. Scene two, I'm giving him my materials. He's giving me his materials. Scene three, I'm studying his materials, and I love them a lot, and we're good friends. So I program that, you know, one, two, three, I'm talking to Rex Syke. We run all the way through it. One, two, three, Rex Sykes disappears from my screen. And so then I went to another one and John Laval's wife was there. She's got three nodes there. Fantastic energy worker. Well, I wanted to get into her mind and some of her energy work. So I go, one, two, three, Katrina's in my mind. I want to learn what she has to offer. One, two, three, she disappears from my mind. And I want to get all this arranged tomorrow, if at all possible, and I want to do it at breakfast. And so I program myself to wake up, to go to breakfast at 7.30 in the morning are the best for all concern. And I go, one, two, three, programmed at one, two, three, I'm done with it. And I said, now I'm going to go to sleep. One, two, three, I'm now going to go to sleep. I fell asleep. 20 minutes after 10 in the morning, I woke up. And I'm feeling really bad. I blew it. I had no clue. I was feeling so bad. So I go, I'm going to go to breakfast anyhow. So I go to breakfast. Guess who's sitting at breakfast? John Laval, Rex Sykes, and Katrina. They're all having breakfast together. So I talked to John, and I sit there and talk a little bit, and talk a little bit, talk a little bit. And I said, by the way, you have some great products. He said, well, so do you. So we made a trade there. And Rex says, yeah, I'd like to have some of yours too. So we made a trade there. And they said, well, we have to go back to class now. And Katrina's left there with me, and so we did some energy drills. So anyway, later on that day, John comes up to him. He goes, uh, by the way, Doc, I'd like you to go to Dr. Bandler's seminar in Orlando. Would you like to come be my guest? And I go, good idea. Thank you very much. One, two, three. Anyway, so I go to the seminar in Orlando, and my last outcome, of course, with Richard Bandler was to become one of his trainers. And I did the one, two, three technique, and when I left the seminar at the end of the seven days, I was then a certified trainer under Dr. Bandler. This is my idea here to show you how Jose Silva used segment intending using the hypnotic one, two, three, switching brains from one frequency to another frequency to another frequency to work on different projects, and you work on all these projects at the same time as long as they're done sequentially. One, two, three. And it's easy to see what the implications with this in business is as well. And so with that, I think it's time to get into the remote viewing exercise. I'll see you in the next session.